think it's time. I don't know if it's working. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, guys. Welcome back to Not Just Mecha. It's Marco here. And tonight we are live. Hi, how are you? First thing first. How is my audio? Can you hear me? I'm checking the chat. Because I'm not sure if you are able to hear me. Ho, 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 ho. I'm starting seeing hello. Hi, guys. Nice. Thank you so much to be here tonight. I know it's a strange uh, Friday night, but uh, if you want to paint with me, I'm super happy to have you here in the new studio. I'll make a tour uh, sooner than later. Hi, hi guys. Ooh, there are a lot of names that I know. Grande, l'audio va bene. Ooh, ciao Fabio. <laughs> oh, stasera si può anche parlare un po' italiano, quindi se hai domande, questa è la serata giusta. Nice. I can do another. Hello, guys. <laughs> How many times you want? <laughs> I can do it uh, every 20 minutes. So if you need a refresh uh, or <laughs> someone else is coming late. Uh... Okay, you'll see me look at the screen uh, like this because I have two different levels between uh, camera and screen so I hope it's not uh, really ugly <laughs> yeah we have uh, probably more than uh, 30 seconds of uh, of delay and uh, it would be useful to to check uh, the chat so rewatch yeah you'll be you'll be able to rewatch the video because at the end of the stream uh, in, the video will be automatic uplo uh, automatically uploaded uh, as a standard video it will take probably half an hour an hour but uh, yeah it will be a standard video later eh sì ciao a tutti gli italiani <laughs> ciao a tutti e veramente fatemi domande in italiano se avete bisogno perché so che qualcuno ha problemi con sottotitoli e inglese quindi chiedetemi cose I was just saying that uh, if some Italian need to ask me questions in Italian is the right time to do it oh from Dublin <laughs> behind the corner Okay, so let's start talking about uh, tonight's project. And uh, I'll jump between uh, the um, YouTube uh, control board and OBS to be sure that uh, I'm in focus. That's another thing that uh, you have to check during the stream. Uh, if there is something uh, not working in the video or in the audio, I'll try to check every now and then to be sure. Especially for the focus, because uh, when I'm this uh, setup, uh, I don't have the autofocus, so I have to actively check uh, and adjust the camera. Oh yeah, don't worry, it will be on YouTube, it will be on Patreon, uh, it will be everywhere. This will become just a standard video, so it will be there for uh, for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I hope to do a lot of uh, Italiano English <laughs> tonight, because... Uh, 
Yeah, I started to put uh, roots uh, even in the Italian audience. Uh, that's strange, yeah, I know. <laughs> so if they need a bit of... Uh... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So the mean is from uh, Big Child Creatives. I can't remember the sculptor, but I can check. And uh, is one of those uh, models that is uh, always available. So if you want to, <laughs> I love you too. Really, I, I miss this, uh, this kind of uh, real time experience. It's a bit strange because I check the chat and I talk with the camera, so it's not 100% uh, like uh, being uh, with uh, someone in the room, but uh, yeah, it's pretty close, and uh, I really missed uh, to have people here painting with me. Nice. Yeah, big child. Okay, so, sorry for the silence, I, I, <laughs> I was reading the chat. So this project here, and I'll uh, check uh, on OBS so I can see the real time without, without the lag, because uh, if I check the control board on YouTube, uh, I'll see my own video with a bit of, uh, of lagging. I wanted to start with the black and white sketch already done because uh, it's something that uh, on this kind of project uh, takes a bit of time. Uh, not so much, uh, something like uh, an hour or uh, a bit more. But uh, yeah, if I do these uh, during the stream, it will probably take uh, the full uh, the full extension of the stream uh, between uh, talking and checking the chat uh, and uh, actually working but um, i want to start uh, explaining a bit uh, the idea behind this sketch the sketch is just a uh, molotov black uh, and uh, white ink on top i didn't use uh, any mid level of gray is just uh, black and white and uh, the modulation uh, comes from uh, the control on the trigger and uh, even more on uh, the distance between uh, the airbrush and the model and it's really easy to create uh, this kind of modulation without using uh, more than one color because uh, when you start with a transparent white over black, uh, you create naturally by overlapping uh, and the transparency affect uh, all the gray you need. So you just need uh, a bit of control. Uh, and if you don't feel to have that kind of control uh, on the trigger and on the distance, uh, start with the um, heavily diluted white. You can add uh, airbrush thinner, you can add a bit of uh, a glaze medium of any kind of medium to stabilize uh, the fluidity after the airbrush thinner so you can compensate a bit uh, the extra fluidity you have uh, with the dilution and uh, having the color more transparent uh, you have more space to adjust uh, the the gray modulation because it's just transparent so the first layer will be almost black then the next layer a bit more gray 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 and uh, you walk uh, little by little towards uh, the white and uh, let's check the chat again guys thank you so much you don't have to i i, I honestly i don't want to do these streams uh for uh, for <laughs> for the money is really super appreciated. It is uh, is a strange feeling. Uh, thank you so much. Just because uh, I need company at the painting table. <laughs> you know, it's a lonely job. Okay, so black and white uh, 
you can dilute the white uh, to have more control uh, and create the gray modulation, but uh, this is not really the important thing. Okay, so like this, I have the whole model uh, in the frame. Whoa, a bit wobbly. The idea behind this, and uh, if you are a veteran of the channel, you already know my, my thoughts about uh, the value sketch, is uh, to get the general values of the model uh, from the beginning. I don't want to reason about this uh, when I apply colors. Well, I have to reason about this uh, applying colors, but uh, if I have to layer without this kind of map, uh, for me personally, it's much more difficult to, to have the perception of the general picture, to have the perception of uh, where I want to go. Even if in my mind uh, I have a precise uh, general picture of the model and the kind of lights I want to paint, uh, I prefer to have uh, those information on the, on the model. So is a way to divide the work in uh, smaller chunks. So I can reason about uh, the values, I can reason about uh, the angle of the light, uh, the intensity of the light, uh, and then apply the colors on top. So I have still the freedom to decide uh, what kind of setting I want to do for, uh, for the model, even if the light has this, uh, already this intensity and this uh, kind of angle. The general concept is uh, in warm morning. I imagine her like a desert warrior. I have uh, deeply in mind the, the kind of color palettes of uh, the old uh, Conan movies. Uh, it's uh, really warm, really yellowish. You have that kind of, uh, of sensations. And uh, I want to to take a step uh, away from the box art, even if uh, I'm planning to paint the air in red because uh, she's Red Sonia. <laughs> I have to. So I want to, to do something different from, uh, from the box art, uh, changing the setting. So I want uh, a desert setting. This will be a warm morning after a night of hunt. So I want these to be a trophy after a night uh, of battle. So the idea is to have a light uh, with a low angle, almost perpendicular. It's just uh, coming from the front of the model. And uh, the model sits on a plinth, uh, and my light is coming uh, slightly from the right. And you can perceive it, I think, uh, in the cylinder that is the face, uh, in the cylinder that is uh, body, arms. Uh, and uh, you lose a bit uh, that sensation here on the upper arm because uh, it's uh, the part that is facing uh, directly the main light uh, and probably one of the first objects to, to catch that main light. So it's a bit overwhelmed by that powerful light. But uh, everywhere else, uh, you can clearly see the directional uh, movement of my light. And on the back, uh, I simply used uh, the same kind of angle because uh, here there is uh, a, a double reason. Part of the reasoning is that uh, real light, uh, it's something but uh, it's not like, uh, it's similar to the spray of the airbrush, but uh, not 100% the same. So the light uh, will hit the model, but uh, will continue its movement uh, all around. And uh, continuing this movement all around, it will uh, come on this side and probably bounce back uh, on, uh, on something that could be the ground, could be a castle, could be a wall, uh, but light is bouncing constantly everywhere. So I'm using the same kind of angle, but uh, on the other side. So if my light is coming from the right here, is hitting the model, uh, then passing through, coming back uh, with this angle, and then coming back on the model. Uh, so the light is a bit lower, and uh, 
coming from, uh, again, the right back because I turned the model on the other side. There is also the reasoning uh, that uh, is, is really something that I'm pushing a lot uh, in my models, especially in uh, competitions model, competition models, or better, display models, because uh, we don't have competitions <laughs> in this period, is the idea that uh, even if the model is uh, a three-dimensional model, let's enlarge a bit because the head is always outside, and uh, yeah, you are able to perceive it in a moving kind of uh, three-dimensional way, but uh, most of the time uh, this will sit on a shelf and uh, you can see the angle of the plinth, uh, that's the main view on the plinth. And if you are looking to this side, uh, you are not able to see and study these uh, at the same time. So in a way, these are two different, uh, totally different things two separate uh, ways to see the model, like uh, one artwork and uh, another artwork. Because in reality, they are not happening at the same time. So I can consider this uh, like an illustration and this side uh, like a second illustration. Usually, I think uh, a lot also about uh, these uh, lateral angles. Uh, that again are the shape of the of the plinth, but uh, yeah, there's not much happening uh, here or here. This doesn't mean that uh, I will paint uh, these sides uh, in a worse way or without being careful as uh, in the main views, but uh, yeah, the main. Uh, load of information and uh, structure of light will be on this side and on this side. Then these two will be just uh, a consequence of the main uh, light sources. Okay, I'll check the, the chat just to be sure that uh, this is not one of those uh, crazy monologues uh, do we have to take ambient occlusion into account in the sketch? Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's an interesting question. Is uh, I I never really pushed uh, too much on uh, ambient occlu ambient occlusion or uh, complicated shadows, but uh, yeah, it's something that uh, I'm always considering if I want to, especially on uh, on figures. Uh, that are from uh, the top of the head and the feet, uh, where I can uh, where I can uh, push a bit more on the on the storytelling on the base, uh, so I can put some elements that uh, let you understand better what's happening. Nice for your questions. Uh, I hope to be at the Adepticon uh, next year. Yeah. I hope to be this year even, but uh, you know the situation. But uh, yeah, I'm really planning for uh, for the next year. And uh, ah. oh yeah, I want to paint. Uh, I'm really into this time. Uh, the, I have a question asking me about uh, historical models. Uh, I'm really into fantasy right now, but um, I have a little collection of models that I have to paint uh, that are strictly historical. And uh, yeah, that's that's a totally different mindset. That's something that uh, you have to handle in a different way, especially now that uh, I'm really into these kind of uh, crazy lights and uh, strange shadows. Uh, in fantasy, you can do whatever you want, uh, really. <laughs> You don't have any limitation if you are following the rules of uh, the color wheel and the color composition. You can really push uh, the composition to levels, to, to crazy levels. You have to be a bit more controlled uh, painting historical. 
I still don't feel ready for that because uh, you need a, a kind of discipline that uh, I feel like lacking right now. <laughs> but I have to, yeah. You do have a various sketch with acrylics, it's basically singing oils. Oh, that's an interesting uh, question. Yeah, you can do the the value sketch with oils. You can't rely too much on uh, the trick of uh, applying and removing because uh, you'll get a very standardized uh, kind of value sketch. It could be a quick way to, to do it, but uh, honestly, not really quicker than uh, a spray can if you don't have an airbrush. So if you want to do it in oil, uh, it's because you probably want to paint in grisaille on top of that. That's a good reasoning, and uh, you, could use, you could use the um, properties of the oils to ease uh, the, the process of the, of the grisaille. That's... Yeah, the historical meaning is, is not only about uh, the saturation, it's about uh, the correct uh, physical behavior of lights and color. So it's not only about uh, putting a bit of gray inside your colors and uh, you have the model done. It is a bit more complicated, at least uh, from my point of view. I think it's much more natural if you have uh, that kind of... Uh, formation if you have that kind of mindset from the beginning for me it's kind of re rebuilding from uh, from the ground <laughs> okay so an interesting thing about uh, the sketch uh, and that's the main thing about the sketch uh, i wanted to talk about uh, Happy to help. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll try to to check the chat a bit more because I think that's the best part of a of a live stream. It's not only about uh, watching me work. Working. Huh? Spanish living in India. That's that's great. Okay, so the the interesting thing about uh, this sketch and it's something that. Uh, I'm uh, still trying to, to understand deeply. Still something uh, not really new, but uh, I'm working on this thing. Is about uh, silhouettes and uh, how to use them uh, to make uh, this kind of uh, 3D paint job uh, a bit more, uh, it's, it's strange, a bit more uh, two-dimensional. The idea is to make uh, the main views of the model uh, like a proper artwork. So I'm trying to use uh, techniques uh, from uh, 2D illustration uh, to give a better perception of the volumes of the figure. It's not something uh, I came up with. Uh, I'm uh, just following uh, the path that is already open. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a tricky process because uh, what I learned is that uh, you have to choose uh, your battles. So I'll, I'll walk through some of my choices. Like, the main one and the most evident one, I think, is uh, this one here on the chopped head. You see, this kind of light here is just uh, a spray from the airbrush. And uh, from this angle, it's just uh, a kind of bouncing light uh, from something that is here. That could be the leather of the skirt uh, or uh, simply the environment. But uh, when you put the model on the main view, this creates uh, a rim of light uh, around uh, the edge. Because uh, this is a tangent point from the light. Uh, this is literally an edge uh, that creates uh, the idea of uh, the third dimension around this head. So the head is obviously three-dimensional, but uh, when you put the model on the shelf, uh, you don't have the full perception of that. And uh, if you want to really push your painting to 
another level, you can't rely on natural light to create uh, this kind of behavior because uh, this is too, too small to create that kind of effect. It's something that uh, in a properly lit environment like a cinematic set, uh, this can easily be created or naturally happen, but uh, only if this head uh, is actually a big human head. So it's a way to enhance uh, the sensation that uh, this is a sphere, to enhance uh, the sense of volume of this uh, little element that uh, is uh, smaller than my thumb, but I want to give the sensation that uh, is something much bigger and uh, more dramatic in uh, the general scene. And uh, another thing that is really useful uh, in the general picture is that uh, you'll see here, but uh, here the plinth uh, will be under the masking tape is black. At the end, uh, this will create a strong separation between uh, the model and the black background. And this will be also in other parts of the model, but uh, in this case, we'll create uh, the sense of depth between uh, the front, uh, the main uh, plane, the first plane of view of the model, and uh, this back plane here, background and foreground. This kind of separation uh, is also internal into the model, like uh, that's a bit more subtle, but uh, still visible here on her chin and cheek. You have a deep shadow here because my light is coming from this side uh, and uh, the head is projecting uh, a strong shadow inside uh, this uh, strand of air. And uh, I want still you to be able to perceive the shape uh, of the face. So again, uh, this is obviously sculpted in, uh, in three dimensions, but uh, if you don't put a bit of light here to suggest that the light is uh, bouncing and creating a bit of uh, reflection and rim around the chin, uh, you lose uh, totally the information about this part of the face. So when you reason about uh, lights and shadows, uh, don't think about shadows like something that uh, swallow everything. Light is bouncing uh, everywhere. And sometimes uh, you can even exaggerate and fake uh, that behavior of light because uh, sometimes it's difficult to predict uh, the real bouncing, uh, the real geometrical behavior of the bounce. Because it's, it's coming from uh, many kind of uh, sources and uh, bouncing planes. It can come from uh, this part of the axe here, but uh, can come from the skin here that is uh, lit by the main light. So it's, uh, it's plausible that uh, you have a lot of bouncing light uh, coming from this side. So it, it can be a way to force a bit uh, your uh, poetical license uh, on the shapes of the model, uh, but it's very difficult to, to be in a situation where uh, is completely not believable, not plausible. Check the chat again. Uh, 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 uh. I'm doing really fine. <laughs> Thanks, Emilian. So now that you live in Ireland, we can find our blessed chicken filet rolls. <laughs> yeah, I'm a fan. Uh, that, that's an interesting question so about question about oils and uh, Luigi is asking me that uh, if he can paint with oils uh, directly from uh, a gray primer or black primer you can paint uh, on top of gray you shouldn't paint on top of black because uh, oils, uh, especially if you don't want to create uh, a strong uh, and uh, thick crust of paint on top of that uh, 
of that uh, black primer needs need a lighter base so you want to start uh, to start from a lighter base because you'll have a thin layer of paint so you want uh, to compensate for that transparency with something that uh, is not completely black okay yeah apple dornart is uh, talking about illustration and thinking about uh, in terms of photography that that's a great a great a great thing to to consider when uh, when studying the light of the model the, the main uh, the main kind of inspiration is uh, cinematic photography all these kind of uh, little tricks of uh, backlighting uh, comes from uh, from uh, cinema techniques, uh, from uh, film techniques. Then in illustration, this is a, you are obliged to do something like this because uh, you have to fake uh, this dimension. So it's not something uh, you can skip. But um, if you want to think uh, about a medium that is uh, more similar to our sculpted model is definitely definitely photography and uh, e photography movies. That's the kind of stuff you see even in TV series. So another example of this, uh, let's see. Well, this is not technically a silhouette, but uh, yeah, it, it's a bit of a silhouette. This strong light uh, around the around the side here i want to suggest uh, the idea that is uh, a big cylinder so it's natural to have here a strong light coming from my main source uh, but uh, putting the extreme uh, of my light here on the tangent uh, really gives the idea of a of an edge something that uh, okay from now on uh, here will be different and uh, the interesting thing is that uh, when you put something like these uh, if you have a black background, uh, if you have uh, the shelf uh, that could be in a competition or a uh, or simple shelf for your collection, you see the better separation you obtain uh, between model and background. This is subtle, uh, again, on the arm, but is again the same uh, kind of principle. This, uh, why don't I do it on the model? here that's a little point of light that uh, if you consider only the cylinder in his uh, total simplicity you have light here and this should be the movement of the shadows but uh, i have something that uh, is probably very reflective uh, all around here so i have to consider this bouncing light uh, because uh, this is not blocking the light uh, you see that uh, arm and side are on different planes so it's natural to have strong light here strong light here and bouncing here and this little light uh, helps me define the muscle and at the same time uh, create the sensation that uh, again this is an edge so these are the main ones on the front and uh, well, first let's see the back, and then we can discuss the consequences on uh, on the sides. Here in the back, I have something similar, and I think that uh, this is the most effective, the best one I painted here. This one uh, under this arm. This for me is uh, is extremely effective and illustrational, and that's probably the best way to to paint a real cylinder because again main light then the shadows then bouncing because uh, even if i don't have anything else around here i have still the ground and my light coming from here will go down and naturally come up not with the same intensity i have here because uh, that's the purest light the strongest light i have then you'll have some subtraction from uh, 
all this bouncing and the ground that is absorbing that light. But still, some of that light uh, will come up from below. And uh, from the technical point of view, this is just... Uh, I just uh, sprayed from below. So you need to like fix the model uh, on the main view and understand where uh, you want to arrive. Sometimes uh, I also do I also paint a little dot uh, on the rim uh, of my light uh, so I can uh, I can tell okay, from here I want to see this line here. I set a little transparent dot uh, then I turn the model and I spray from below. So I know that I have to reach the dot uh, to create this kind of, uh, it's just a simple line of, uh, of white. If you take it uh, outside the context. But uh, the effect that uh, this simple line makes here is, uh, is huge. Really huge. And uh, here again, another good example. That's I started from here, and you can tell that uh, the technical uh, application here is, uh, is a bit better, <laughs> because I had the chance to make practice on the front. That's the worst thing you can do. You always want to start from the back and then apply what you understood on, uh, on the front. But uh, yeah, I was cocky. <laughs> I was too cocky here. Here is again another silhouette that uh, is working really well for me. Again, a back, black uh, background helps uh, to understand this kind of behavior. And it's something that uh, I added later because uh, I started spraying from here, so I have the main light uh, eating first uh, this side of the body. You can see that uh, this is whiter than this part, so you have a modulation of the light around uh, this uh, big cylinder. Because you can simplify every, every shape in uh, simpler shapes. So this, uh, at the end, the whole model is a big cylinder. Then I can uh, consider all the smaller elements uh, I have inside. So I started from here, and uh, this is the main application of the light. And then I saw that uh, I had something missing here. I didn't have the perception of uh, this uh, round shape. That is a mix of a, of a sphere and a cylinder. So it's a bit more a cylinder. In my, in my rendering here, I gave priority to the, to the cylinder because it's a bit elongated on this uh, vertical line. So, I really felt the need of something, uh, a bit of light here, because uh, this light here and this shadow here didn't give me the full perception of this uh, mass. So it's really about uh, if the volume you are rendering is, uh, is believable at the end. So I added this, uh, this light here, and again, I found that uh, it's very natural, because my light coming from here, if you check this angle, is the light that is uh, moving uh, all around the model, then coming back on this side, and it's really natural to have a bouncing light here. So if you fix uh, a side, uh, you are probably fixing also another side, because uh, Again, in this, uh, the spray of the airbrush is uh, really similar to the, to the real behavior of light. This uh, really direct uh, movement of photons uh, simplified in a movement of pigments. So, silhouette, silhouette, and uh, here I tried uh, a silhouette uh, in black, so it will be not super effective on this, uh, but uh, is a way to create the sensation of depth. I'll probably add uh, a bit of bouncing light just here on the rim because again, 
this is the real uh, main view if I flatten the plinth uh, on the table. So I'll probably at the end add uh, just a tiny dot of light here under the armpit. And these are the main things I wanted to talk about. Oh, and uh, at the end I'll also push. Uh, is, uh, it was uh, really difficult to do it uh, with the airbrush because uh, the thickness of this uh, of the axe uh, is uh, almost nothing compared to the kind of lights I'm uh, I'm spraying and working here. So this will do. This will be a, a thing to do with the airbrush. With the airbrush, and will be a rim of light down here to complete the sensation of the cylinder. Again, this uh, the handle of the axe. Uh, I want to behave. Uh, like this. So I'll add uh, a rim of light uh, down here to create this kind of uh, full sensation of volume. Wow. And that's all. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of stuff uh, to, to process, uh, as always. <laughs> Sorry for the monologue. And uh, Probably it, it was better to to do it on camera. <laughs> but yeah, you have the full picture. Uh, 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 is there a reason that the left side shoulder, left side shoulder, I think you mean this one doesn't have a rim light. He, he does a rim light, but uh, I want a bit. Uh, I was a bit heavy handed here. See? Here. It's a bit more uh, on this side because I felt that uh, I really wanted to push uh, the grayscale on this part uh, compared to this side. So. I played safe and I put uh, the rim light uh, on this angle. And uh, I know I said that uh, these uh, kind of angles are not really meaningful, but still I want to do something interesting here. So in this view, I want to push a bit more on uh, this side and give the idea of uh, the two different levels from here to here. And then you see the rim light uh, going on this side. That was uh, the reasoning. So it's there, but uh, not obvious uh, like this. And uh, yeah, probably I could have uh, add a bit more white here in the middle. So I can create uh, two different kind of silhouettes, like uh, the one in shadows here, and uh, you see the one in shadow here with the light in the middle. And this creates a lot of uh, difference between the two sides, giving more the idea that is uh, super lit uh, and this is uh, much more in the shadows. Just uh, switching the two light, light, uh, shadow in the middle and uh, shadow, shadow, light in the middle. And uh, yeah, I want to talk also about uh, the air. And uh, this is a very comic book style uh, kind of rendering of the air. You see, light, shadow, light. Like you see every time uh, you take a look to a comic book or a manga, you have the white band uh, around the shape uh, of the head. And it is. Uh, like a, a U shape because it's uh, simulating the cylindric shape of the head. And uh, yeah, it works every time. <laughs> it's for sure an oversimplification, but uh, it really gives the idea of something uh, with the metallic shine. In this case, uh, the shine of the air. And uh, here, I have the same behavior, but here my light is coming from this side, so it's catching uh, the shape uh, facing on this side. So this uh, big wave here, 
and this wave here on top of the head. Like here, I have my light coming uh, from here. So I have uh, these different shapes. So it will be like uh, a line, a line, because the waves are more uh, vertical. And super simple uh, skulls and the head. These are cylinder. These are um, spheres. So a nice uh, round shape of white, uh, shape of white, shape of white, round shape of white. And that's uh, simply like uh, with the airbrush from here. I am about a few centimeters away, eating first. Uh, the top of the skull, and then creating the modulation all around. But uh, yeah, it's super simple when you have uh, this kind of uh, very precise uh, spherical shape uh, with this kind of simple angle of the light. So started from the top uh, and then created the modulation starting from here. I think it's time to do something for real. <laughs> Sarà una lunga notte. <laughs> yeah, it, it could be a long night if I continue talking like this. <laughs> if you get into the science of light in there, you can drive you mad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a, a huge topic. That's why I tend to use uh, comics that are my main, uh, my main thing uh, after... Or before miniatures to to understand that kind of uh, super complex behavior because again it's my priority is uh, is never in extreme realism so I can take some uh, I, I I prefer to have um, the physical realism of the behavior of this kind of light uh, and then go mad with the colors but uh, yeah, there is a, a bit of gray area between uh, realism and uh, poetical license. Don't worry. Oh, just the standby of the camera. I made so many tests <laughs> to avoid this. Okay, so do you take a picture of the sketch? Do you start with transparent layers of paint? Yeah, yeah, that's the next step. I have... Uh, the phone uh, that is already full of pictures of this uh, general state and uh, is not uh, it's not super essential when you have uh, the sketch in mind or in my case uh, if you work uh, the whole process with uh, with uh, transparent layers but uh, yeah i always suggest to take pictures and even if late Usually I, I don't uh, really use them anymore. There is uh, every now and then a situation where I need uh, to come back and check what I was doing because uh, even if uh, it's just a simple mistake uh, and I'm using uh, a, a bit of paint that is uh, more opaque than the rest, uh, I risk to lose uh, all this information. So always take picture. And uh, this has to be a reference uh, and a base because, again, uh, I want for sure to enhance the shadow here. I want for sure uh, to enhance uh, a bit uh, the cheekbone here. I want for sure to add uh, that little dot of light here and the light down here. So it has to be a value sketch. This is not the finished model. I know it, it looks uh, pretty good. It's a, it's a nice rendering, and sometimes uh, you are really afraid to to lose this kind of uh, sketch. But again, it's a process. It's a constant uh, back and forth. <laughs> Bartumber. You ask for Bartumber. Easier. Easier. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much.
Do you start dark during the underpainting stage at all? Do you start the darks uh, during the underpainting? Uh, talking about uh, that's that's um, an interesting question that uh, is useful to to point out a thing uh, that sometimes I forget. My sketches are always in a value scale that is a bit higher of what you should do if you want to do a proper, pure, clean value sketch. If you check my shadows, it's almost like I don't have black almost anywhere. And that's because uh, I know my way of painting and I know that uh, in those shadows uh, I want to put colors. So all my sketches are a bit uh, higher in the value sketch. And uh, all my shadows are never, 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 never pure black. Even inside uh, the eye sockets of the skull. And uh, probably because of the lights, uh, it seems like a, a strong black here, but uh, is a very dark gray, even inside here, just because I sprayed uh, to catch uh, this movement here. But I know that uh, I want to add uh, a bit of color there. I don't want pure black. I don't really like to paint my shadows in uh, pure black. And even if the final sensation will be almost black, uh, it doesn't have to be black. So everything is a bit on, uh, on the gray scale side. Even here, that's, that's just a gray. I don't have black, uh, real black, uh, anywhere. Even here, that is uh, all in shadows. And uh, if you check in the middle between the skulls, there's still a bit of gray. That's my thing. It's not something I, I suggest uh, to everybody. And uh, it's important to point out that uh, that uh, you know that I'll do that kind of trick. <laughs> the cutest painter, that, that's new. <laughs> that's really new. Okay, so let's do something. Let's do something practical. Let's do something practical. So I started knowing, saying that uh, Thank you so much. This kind of support is uh, is uh, really amazing, and uh, yeah, again, the best way to to support uh, the the channel is always uh, watch, uh, share. Uh, don't worry about uh, Patreon and uh, donations. That they are super useful. <laughs> I I don't want to say that are not useful. They are essential, but. Uh, yeah, that's the best way to. Is there a reason uh, you don't do collaborations with other painters? Uh, no, not a particular reason. Uh, not a particular reason. Is uh, just that I'm always on a tight schedule, and uh, yeah, it's strange. I, I have to do it more collaborations, but uh, I have a lot of plans. I have a lot of stuff I want to paint. I have a lot of stuff that I paint. Uh, for uh, work and for commissions. So thinking about uh, the structure of a collaboration and uh, the process to define uh, a story, a model, and uh, yeah, it's something that uh, is just a, a matter of time. <laughs> okay, so the whole idea is this uh, kind of warm environment. And uh, I'll paint uh, her like, uh, Red Sonia, that's my main reference. I, I I want to do something different. I want to do something different, but uh, come on, she is Red Sonia. And uh, yeah, I want to work everything around uh, this huge mass uh, of uh, will be red air. And uh, there are a couple of ways in in which you can do you can do something like this. Uh, you can create uh, contrast uh, between the main body and uh, and the air if you want to really put all the all the attention here. 
So it's a great trick, uh, and uh, it's something like uh, you can see also in the, the in the box art. The skin uh, is uh, a bit colder than the hair, so you really focus your attention first uh, on this area here. And uh, another thing you can do for the sake of storytelling, and is what uh, I want to do, is uh, to put uh, everything in a fiery environment. I'll create internal contrast between uh, skulls, uh, leather, and uh, the head. That will be another focal point that I want to separate uh, with another temperature here. But uh, yeah, I want this to be really fiery. I want to give you the sensation of the fury after battle that is still uh, lingering here. So I'll use uh, the warm environment uh, to push also the, the warmth of the, on the hair. But this will be a long way to arrive at that point. And uh, I'll take a couple of detours uh, around, the, around the work. So I want to start with something that uh, I talked about uh, in the other video about uh, the bust. And uh, it's something that uh, I tested off camera on uh, smaller models a lot recently. And is uh, the Verdaccio technique. Obviously it's, uh, again, a cheater Verdaccio because I use uh, the super great uh, contrast plague bearer flash to create a bit of uh, internal contrast with the skin. And uh, if you didn't watch that video, that's, uh, that's part of uh, your homework. So the idea, the idea is to start uh, with this kind of layer, transparent layer, over the sketch, and uh, I'll apply it quickly with the airbrush because uh, I don't want uh, smudges here. It, it, uh, it will be a skin uh, with a lot of uh, weathering on top because, again, the idea is to have a uh, post-battle, so it will be full of uh, blood splatters and uh, that kind of effects. <laughs> Black contrast paint. Contrast paints uh, are great <laughs> because uh, they are simply inks with matte medium. And since I was uh, already into inks uh, before the advent of contrast, I love them because they, they are the same stuff. So if we want to talk about uh, price point and what you get, uh, between uh, this one and this one uh, for uh, for the same price. Uh, obviously, inks uh, win all the time. But uh, you get some strange colors here. You get a more matte finish. Uh, and again, it's, my point of view is uh, I can understand that he's a bit biased because uh, I'm not concerned about... Uh, buying colors and uh, exaggerating in that. I, I'm sure that uh, sooner or later I'll use them uh, because I paint for eight hours a day every day. So it's not really my concern about uh, if I'll use them or uh, if are or not part of a useful collection. And by the way, I <laughs> yesterday I ordered the the version of contrast paints by scale 75. I think they call them uh, the potions. Uh, I'm super curious to try them. And you get the same kind of behavior. This is just uh, in his uh, purest form. So it's slightly more uh, transparent and uh, slightly more uh, glossy, satin. Satin is, is uh, the best term. And uh, with this you get uh, a more matte finish, but uh, yeah, they are the same stuff. I know that could be a, a, a great clickbait uh, video, but uh, here's the recipe. You add matte medium to inks and you get contrast paints. That's my clickbait video. 
I'm wasting content. I'm wasting content. So, uh, here. I want this to be something that you are able to see. Uh, I'll check a chat again. Uh, we'll just catch like these without an airbrush. Oh, yeah. Yeah, easily. And uh, I did uh, a quick, quick sketch. Let's see, what is the miniature? A last day exercises with uh, about sketching with one of my Patreons. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, let's see if it's visible. It's not uh, the same uh, kind of quality. Oop. That's a 10 minute sketch uh, with the brush. So yeah, it doesn't really matter if uh, you are painting uh, a miniature or a bust. Uh, if you want to paint with a brush, uh, you can do everything uh, you do with the airbrush with the brush, but not the contrary. So even if I love the airbrush uh, and uh, it was kind of my my thing when I came back uh, to human figures uh, after uh, all the robots and the mechs uh, that uh, taught me about uh, airbrushing uh, is still something that uh, I really believe that the brush is, uh, is uh, superior in every way. So airbrush is a tool. Oop. Don't worry, I have my little pot holder. So, I'm talking too much and working uh, not so much. No, no tricks, no filters. There's nothing from the pot uh, to the airbrush. Uh, too much. And uh, again, every time uh, you don't feel confident about uh, your control, uh, thin the paint down. Make it more transparent. You can compensate everything with uh, the extra transparency. You trade uh, the speed uh, with more control. That's uh, uh, which mat medium. Uh, I talked about this uh, in the I think last video. My main uh, mat. Uh, what is it? Sorry. <laughs> I have it behind the screen. My main mat v mat um, medium is uh, Vallejo glaze medium. This one, and uh, this is my first choice because uh, it's uh, very fluid. So since I use it uh, for uh, actual glazes and for the airbrush, uh, I prefer to have something that is uh, already very liquid and fluid uh, with a watery consistency because uh, usually artist mediums are uh, very thick but uh, what i discovered recently and i'm using more and more mostly for uh, for uh, brush work but uh, is great also in the airbrush is uh, this stuff here and uh, yeah magic mix can can mean uh, <laughs> anything but uh, you have the explanation light sealer containing a stander for open time that dries matte so the extender really helps uh, with the airbrush and also for for glazing and uh, for sketching so th that's that's the description of, of a medium the only thing that uh, you have uh, more is the acrylic retarder the extender so this is really useful if you want to work uh, wet on wet or something like that or for the airbrush it's a bit thicker than uh, glaze medium, but uh, you can use both of them. So since my general contrast would be a bit softer than uh, the one in the box art, uh, where you have uh, a strong separation between uh, air and skin, uh, I have to play a bit more uh, inside. Grazie mille. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Really, I am <laughs> again. I'm always embarrassed. Uh, embarrassed when uh, you do something like this. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you very much. Would you use Flow Improver over Thinner for airbrush? Uh, almost never. <laughs> Uh, I, I have this uh, in video. Flow Improver is not something that uh, is super useful for us. It's probably better a proper uh, a proper acry acrylic retarder because uh, Flow Improver is something that uh, you use uh, for the brush. The flow we are talking about is the flow of the brush, not the flow inside uh, inside the airbrush. So it's not really something that uh, helps the paint flowing inside. Uh, I should have cleaned the airbrush before the live, but my Iwata is a beast. Doesn't need anything. So I'm using Plague Beater Flash over the black and white sketch to create a fake Verdaccio. If you want to paint a real Verdaccio, it's like uh, painting in grisaille. You start with a more saturated version and you create the full modulation, the full, uh, the full sketch uh, with... Uh, that kind of tones but uh, this is the beauty of uh, of transparent paint is uh, is that uh, you still uh, not only see through the values but uh, you are actively mixing colors and in this case uh, i'm mixing uh, the gray scale uh, into this kind of uh, green uh, yellowish tone but uh, it's the same principle so plague beater flash uh, doesn't come out uh, as uh, is a pure tone uh, that is uh, very saturated and very yellowish it turns a bit more into the green notes and you see that is a uh, very simple and uh, without any kind of uh, real depth or interesting tones, but uh, you can't argue about the realism. And uh, here I'm being super gentle on the trigger. And if you want to see, that, that's about the distance I'm using. Yeah. It's difficult to see it from here, but uh, I'm probably almost 10 centimeters away from, uh, from the model. And I'm spraying outside uh, on my, whoop, on my towel just because uh, the airbrush is uh, super dirty. So I'm feeling a bit of uh, resistance on the paint and uh, I prefer to move the crust of paint <laughs> from the needle every now and then. And to play safe, uh, you probably already noticed, uh, I'm uh, spraying a bit more from the shadows because uh, they will naturally absorb more uh, more tone. So if for uh, for uh, for a mistake I'm a bit more heavy-handed, uh, the shadows will uh, naturally soften the the error because they will be not more saturated but more opaque. Because in this particular model, I want to increase the saturation of everything everywhere again the idea is uh, is to create uh, an artwork I'm, uh, I'm more worried about uh, 
the final sensations that uh, it will deliver then uh, This arm is already beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling it by myself. Come on, don't make me clean you in live stream. bit heavy ended but in the shadows and I'm worried about mistakes and uh, control just because I want still to to save uh, to save time where I can this is obviously not a speed painting project but uh, if I can save an hour because I don't have to fix uh, a mistake is is time that I can use uh, for something else. I probably put uh, the ascent on speed uh, too much during the videos and uh, my work in general. That that's the deformation of uh, the years of uh, commission painting. And uh, that's part of the of the process. I have to insist a bit more here because again it's shadows. I still keep a bit of space for other colors, uh, but yeah, I have to work up here, and uh, I'm probably out of focus here. Let's do like this always move the model around especially if you are airbrushing that's the true secret of airbrushing you have to start thinking about the model not as a, as a model but just just an object don't think about it as a, a thing with the, the eyes on top and the nose in the middle and the mouth uh, as lower part of the face it's just an object Then you can come back later, giving meaning uh, to those parts. But uh, when you are defining volumes, uh, these are just uh, just volumes and masses. Don't 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 reason too much about uh, the nature of those masses. In this stage, are just uh, things catching light. And I can see a meme here. Boobs are <laughs> things catching light. Yep. That's the kind of. Uh, I'm I'm watching uh, the result through the screen and is a bit more bluish of compared to to what I see in person. But uh, let's see if I zoom in. Maybe the color is a bit more faithful to the. Very subtle, but everything is there. And uh, I insist a bit more in a couple of uh, parts. I want uh, this green to be a bit more powerful. And uh, I didn't reach well. Uh, you see the neck inside here. But yeah, there's a start. It's a start. And before going on, let's check the chat. 
except if you need to talk uh, into a microphone. Uh, I mentioned somewhere, I was thinking about it. What about the food? <laughs> so there, it works. Solution. Ah, we are, you are talking about uh, masks and... Uh, The brushing, do you think masks and aspirators? It's it's a uh, it's a good question, and uh, is one question that I receive a lot. I always, always, always have the mask uh, under the table, and uh, it's always here, easy to catch. And uh, I use it when I prime a lot of models. If I have to paint a warband, uh, I have the mask on. If I have uh, to prime a warband or a a small army or uh, even something uh, a, a warband for uh, for underworld that uh, usually are five six models uh, and i'm painting very quickly with the with primers or uh, molotov paints that are really volatile not really volatile but uh, easy in creating um, dust I use uh, I use the respirator, but uh, yeah, you'll uh, you'll check uh, every now and then my my mat, uh, and you'll see that uh, you don't uh, I don't have a lot of overspray. Uh, you don't have varnish to accelerate drying. Uh, no, no. If I add varnish, is because. Uh, I want uh, the finish of the varnish. If I'm adding varnish to something like this, is because I want to correct uh, the finish of uh, of an ink or uh, like uh, blue contrast paints are uh, very glossy because they're a bit more concentrated and uh, more similar to the to the original uh, ink. But uh, no, this case is just uh, pure contrast. Let's go a bit deeper inside the neck. Yeah, at this stage, uh, she's a bit of a Warcraft orc. <laughs> I saw it in the the chat. Just the. I know this is this is not a project that is uh, moving fast as a miniature, but uh, I thought it was interesting to move uh, a bit away from miniatures. And uh, you saw it also on uh, on the channel. This period I used uh, a lot another bust uh, and uh, kingdom that models because. Uh, Especially with uh, GW models, uh, there's always, always uh, the expectation of something. Not not in the quality department, but uh, everybody has an opinion of uh, how an ultramarine should look, uh, of uh, how a blood angel should look, and uh, yeah, it's something that is really bothering me. <laughs> That's a phase uh, that uh, I have uh, every now and then, even before the channel. So it's not uh, created by by the comments or the audience, but uh, you know you don't have the same freedom uh, when you paint uh, something like this uh, or uh, or a space marine. At least in my in my experience, in my way of painting. So it's a bit easier here to accept uh, another kind of scheme because uh, you don't have a background uh, or a rule book telling you how you should paint your model. 
for me this is all about uh, freedom of uh, creativity and uh, yeah sometimes it's, uh, it's difficult to to work inside uh, those limits and by the way I, I'll contradict myself next week uh, with a new Lizardman warband from uh, from Underworld and uh, I have the the new box uh, it arrived uh, yesterday Warhammer Quest is on its way I think it too a series of uh, speed painting videos I'm not super sure about the format and uh, it's something that uh, I wanted to ask you if uh, in chat we have uh, people interested in uh, Curse City do you want to see the heroes or you want to see the monsters uh, you want to see more vampires and skeletons uh, because my original idea was uh, speed painting uh, the blocks of uh, antagonists so skeletons, uh, zombies uh, and vampires in uh, three different videos that was my first uh, my first idea and I'm not sure about uh, the heroes because uh, since they are for my own collection I want to paint them uh, in a very good speed painted but uh, advanced speed painted all of them <laughs> both <laughs> and the GW is Gucci but painting for the monster for sure interesting yeah oh I'll do it for sure because I, I'm the one uh, hyped uh, hyped for the game oh I think there was a question, but the chat is moving super fast. Uh, reading the expectation of how example of Chinese Space Marine chapter should look. From a viewer's perspective, I find other people's take on different themes very interesting. Uh, that, that's a very progressive point of view. I, I was uh, reading the, the comment of Stefan that uh, tells me that uh, he's inspired by the different takes uh, on, uh, on the same subject, but uh, you would be surprised uh, by by a lot of comments like this is not uh, an ultramarine that was something that uh, <laughs> really hit me hard not from the <laughs> not from the being self-confident point of view but uh, yeah, that's, that's Christopher. Thank you so much. When I know when it's done, and uh, that, that's an interesting question. And again, thank you so much. You, yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> difficult to know when to stop. For me, is when uh, when I do something, when I apply a brush stroke. Uh, that uh, is not uh, adding anything to the to the storytelling to the textures to the to to any level of the model and sometimes is uh, even ruining it that's for me the signal to stop in general my my way to understand uh, when a model is finished is uh, being faithful to my original plan you know from the videos that uh, I I always start uh, with a very tight plan uh, on how the model should should look like at the end, and uh, if I feel that uh, whoop, the model is fulfilling uh, that kind of image I have in mind, uh, I stop there. That that might signal signal. Okay, I'm overdoing because uh, 
I'm talking, I'm, I'm not super good at <laughs> multitasking uh, in this. Uh, that's why I don't stream a lot. But uh, yeah, that's the finish I wanted to achieve. It's, uh, it's a bummer because uh, yeah, it's a bit more, it's a bit more greenish than uh, it looks here. Yeah, from, from here is a bit more uh, faithful to the original color, but uh, I think that from here is more like uh, something painted with uh, raw sienna, while the point is to make it uh, more green. Oh, and I forgot to tell uh, to talk about this, and uh, it's one of my main reasons to to use the Verdaccio in uh, in this context is because it's uh, super Frasetta style. <laughs> and uh, I really wanted to be into that kind of uh, barbarian uh, kind of style. Oh, and again, I saw another comment in the chat. Uh, I wasn't talking about uh, eight or uh, anything like that. Just, just uh, expectations. It's something that uh, I completely understand when uh, you work inside uh, an aesthetic that has uh, dozens of books and uh, descriptions and. Uh, official renderings and uh, artworks because uh, well artworks are a bit more on my side because they're a bit more forgiving on the look uh, of the same space marine if you check the art of uh, warhammer 40,000 there is a book with full filled with artworks uh, you never find uh, the same space marine of the same chapter depicted in the same way, so that's my point. But I understand that uh, in the miniature field uh, there is this kind of uh, expectation for the final look. Okay, that's a good start. So I'll empty the airbrush. I'll move the model away because I don't want uh, a drop of airbrush cleaner to create some damages or problem. That's the only thing I do between uh, sprays. I clean the cap and then I spray it away, not here, but uh, inside, Whoop. difficult to move. It's cleaning cap, but uh, just to let you understand that uh, you don't need a lot of uh, cleaning between uh, between one spray and the other. And it, it depends a bit on uh, the airbrush you have. That's why I really like uh, the Iwata HPBH. That, that's a tool for people that don't clean the airbrush too much. So if you have this kind of issue, consider to, to upgrade to the Iwata. Okay, let's check the chat before going on. Uh, who can say what an ultramarine would look like? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, thanks. You consider online painting workshops? Uh, I do a bit of uh, online teaching. I started to do it uh, a bit uh, less than usual because uh, with the channel and uh, the baby at home uh, is, uh, is a bit difficult, but uh, I hope to be more present on that side uh, after all the COVID situation. I'm still in the phase of spending more time unclogging my hairbrush than actually airbrushing. That's usually a problem of uh, paint consistency. Oh yeah, the tea towel is a, is a must. I don't like the Infinity CR Plus. 
<laughs> I really don't like it. I have a, a thing against uh, that airbrush. It's... Uh, I have a water. Break it down to clean every time. Uh, well, it depends on the model, obviously. So I'm not saying that uh, every Iwata is impossible to, to clog. Uh, and you saw that uh, this is almost clogged, but uh, I didn't uh, clean it, uh, I think, in a couple of months. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, um, even uh, the... Um, uh, again, from uh, Arder and Stanback, uh, the evolution. The evolution is uh, really beginner-friendly, super easy to clean. Very, very easy to clean. How long I spend on production? Uh, for one video, it depends. Uh, if you take away the, the painting time, because uh, for miniature painting videos, we have to take in consideration also, also the painting time. For uh, script and editing, uh, a couple of days, often three. I don't like the Infinity CR Plus uh, because, first of all, I don't like uh, its original uh, 0.15 uh, needle. I think it's uh, it creates more uh, more uh, problems uh, than anything else, and. Uh, you don't really need that kind of uh, super small needle. You think that uh, a difference between uh, a 0 0.2 and uh, 0 0.20 and 0 0.15 uh, is not so much, but uh, is huge in terms of uh, paint flow. And uh, yeah, so if you buy it for the 0 0.15, it is uh, totally overpriced because uh, it's the same construction of the evolution, and uh, it I think it costs uh, two times the same of uh... yeah there is a bit of latency sorry and um, yeah you pay more to have a needle that uh, I don't like uh, for me the gold standard is the uh, 0 0.2 you can do details and uh, you can do large priming I prime everything uh, with an 0.2, even armies, uh, and uh, on something like uh, the evolution, you can move to an, a 0.3 needle and uh, and uh, 0.4, I think, also. If you really want to paint uh, also terrains or uh, huge monsters. So, yeah. For me, is that. Is, is the fact that uh, is the same thing of the evolution that is super cheap, uh, as a very good uh, entry airbrush, uh, and uh, you don't get uh, anything more. And the 0.15 is just uh, an illusion. <laughs> so let's do something on the model because, uh, again, I'm talking, but I'm not working. Let's see. You asked for uh, Bert Amber. It's here. <laughs> so I want to start uh, moving to. And I'll switch again, uh, sorry, to OBS because I have uh, the real-time uh, behavior of the camera. Whoop. I want to move uh, to warmer shadows. And uh, I can't jump uh, from this green uh, to something like this uh, or something like this uh, or even more something like this. And that's because, uh, let's see if I have, yeah, it's here. Oop. Oop. If you try to jump uh, from here to here on the color wheel by overlapping the colors, like uh, in my case, oh, see, the green is is much more what I see in this kind of uh, zooming out. So if you try to move from year to year by overlapping, uh, you get the same behavior of a of a mix. 
and when uh, you mix two complementary colors, uh, you obtain uh, just a gray scale. And uh, depending on the saturation of these colors, uh, you can easily get something uh, that is uh, very similar to black. That, that's a chromatic black. And uh, I want to avoid that, so I have to bridge uh, these two tones uh, moving uh, this way or this way, doesn't really matter, but uh, I need something in between these two. And to do that, uh, I'm going to use my trusty Bird Thunder. So, this is something you can do later or uh, just now. That, that's totally option, but optional, but uh, probably I never use this, uh, this approach on uh, in the videos, so I'll, uh, I'll do it now. This will be much more satin and glossy than uh, what I have here, because the white is uh, very matte uh, and uh, the light uh, Plague Bearer Flash is uh, extremely matte uh, since it's super stretched on top uh, of that white. So I can apply these uh, and then uh, worry about uh, the finish later and then give uh, an extra layer of varnish that at this point uh, is not ruining uh, the depth of your colors because uh, is uh, just uh, just this it's just one color over the black and white so there isn't uh, any depth uh, to to flatten or i can mix these uh, in the airbrush right now and get uh, basically a contrast paint uh, out of this and I think I'll do that. I think I'll do that. And uh, I always told you to not mix uh, into the airbrush, but uh, I'm not considering this uh, as mixing. It's not like I'm creating a, a color, it's just a varnish uh, plus ink. So I start with a bit of varnish. I used, I think, uh, five drops because uh, this is quite glossy. And uh, again, it's not uh, it's tight. Most of the times uh, I use these uh, as it is, uh, and better, 99% of the times, because I, I use these like uh, a, a sweaty layer to, to give uh, that kind of uh, consistency to the skin. But uh, here I feel that uh, I can't uh, commit uh, to the kind of finish uh, right now. So I want to play safe and uh, uniform everything to the finish I have here. And my, my way of mixing uh, inside the cup, I don't like to use uh, the brush, but I use uh, whoop, something like this and uh, moving the paint uh, a couple of times. Uh, in and out, uh, you get uh, the mix you need. Because in this case, I'm really taking uh, everything I put in the cap. Uh, it's not like mixing with the brush, and uh, probably the first drops you have uh, are already up here. But I'm sucking all the paint and then uh, putting it back. Again, th this is just uh, optional. This is not... Uh, a, an incredible trick, but uh, yeah, that's an option you have if you want to to adapt the finish of the paint. That's why I'm not really concerned about uh, the slightly glossiness of uh, a golden paints or inks, uh, because uh, yeah, at every layer you can adjust everything as you need. So check the chat briefly to be sure that you are still with me. Jeremy, thank, thank you so much. Thanks a million. I said I missed my first one. What do you think uh, you'll have the first video up? What do you think you'll have the first video up? Just so I can plan. Uh, 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 what video up? <laughs> sorry. This one? Yeah, this is, uh, sorry. I put it on uh, 
inside the frame for a second probably. Whoop, here. Transparent burnt amber. That's a very, very nice uh, warm brown that, uh, thanks to the transparency, that's not only because it, it's an ink, but uh, it's transparent uh, for its own nature. So you get uh, that extra transparency that helps you adapt it uh, a bit more. Whoop. Oh, okay, I think, sorry, Jeremy, I think you, you meant uh, the Curse City. Curse City. Yeah, I have ready for next week uh, the, almost ready, the video about uh, the Lizardman from uh, Warhammer Underworlds. And uh, then the week after, I'll do the first one of uh, Curse City, for sure. Sorry, it was uh, in my train of thought. thoughts. Okay. Tell us a ghost story. <laughs> okay. Focus. So, I'm moving into the shadows. So, even my spray will be moved into the shadows that I already hear. So I'm starting spraying from a safe place like uh, under the arm and this side. The idea is to work inside the value I already have. And uh, I'm enhancing that value for sure because uh, I had already the, the value modulation from uh, light gray and dark gray and almost black. So the main thing I'm doing here is uh, adding tones to that modulation. But uh, since the modulation is already there and I applying colors on top, uh, that shadow will become also darker. Darker, but uh, with colors. And again, that's the reason why I made that disclaimer at the beginning. That's why I don't want uh, my shadow to be black from the beginning, because uh, I want to arrive to that kind of value little by little, adding colors. If I start with the proper black, uh, like here under the chin, uh, I don't have the space to add uh, stuff. And for stuff, I mean uh, tones, uh, details, textures. Uh. So I always keep uh, that bit of uh, safe space. And uh, here I'm using the airbrush uh, because I want uh, to create a, a strong uh, smoothness for uh, for a female skin, even if uh, it's a strong barbarian. It's, it's something different from uh, the old creepy guy I painted for, uh, for the video about uh, eyes, where I wanted to put uh, all uh, the ascent on uh, wrinkles and uh, the old dry skin. So that's that's a choice. And in that one, I painted everything uh, with the brush and uh, the airbrush was just a tool uh, to soften the transitions at the end. But uh, the main uh, choice for a tool or another is uh, it's because of the not only the finish but uh, yeah the general sensation it can uh, produce and i'm going over with the brush on top of this i don't want to have the skin uh, fully airbrushed but uh, 
you know, again, the best tool uh, for uh, the job you are doing. I really want uh, one of the main reasons for uh, for all my preaching on the channel. I want to move away from this uh, airbrushing cheating connection because uh, it's like uh, telling to a carpenter, oh, you use uh, electric tools, that's cheating. Real uh, woodworking is uh, just by, by end, just a tool. And if you're using tools, uh, you know that you want to use the best tool uh, for uh, every job and situation. Like if you need a screwdriver, you don't use an hammer. <laughs> you need a screwdriver. See? Sorry, that's the, the vibration from the compressor that is uh, moving just a bit the camera. Creating the glitch. I started from a, a proper green because, uh, again, when you see these uh, on the pot, uh, you, you think only about uh, Nargol and uh, plague beaters. <laughs> but it's much more versatile than you think. If I have to choose only a single pot of contrast paint, uh, it's for sure this one. If you want to buy only one, buy this one. That's amazing. I'll catch up with you. Uh, needle size, again, I use only 0 0.2. 0 0.2 for everything. And uh, my secondary airbrush, if I have to paint uh, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of volumes, uh, I switch to the to the evolution. It's uh, still a, a point two, but uh, I use the evolution just for, uh, because I don't care about it. <laughs> it is a very old airbrush uh, and uh, yeah, I can treat him really badly. Oh yeah, there's a lot of people saying uh, airbrushing is cheating. Yeah, uh, so. The, the Verdaccio thing is, uh, is uh, a bit more complicated. The tone is very similar to this Plague Beater Flash, but uh, Plague Beater Flash is similar to the Verdaccio, how we see it uh, on old paintings today. So this kind of uh, um, desaturated, uh, very yellowish tone uh, is more similar to the result of Verdaccio after being painted centuries ago and then uh, just oxidized uh, after a lot of time. If you take a proper Verdaccio tube uh, from the art store, and that's, that's something that uh, exists in a pre-made form, is a bit more uh, like a, an emerald gray. It's a bit more, uh, it's a bit colder, colder and darker. And uh, if I have to give you an idea with a popular color, uh, could be similar like to Incubi Darkness from GW, to give a reference. Uh, a, a dark uh, emerald, uh, quite cold tone. That's the modern Verdaccio. The idea that... Uh, that... Uh, how it is originally when, when mixed. It's the old making machine. What is an old making machine? Yeah, 0 0.3 is, uh, is fine for details. 0 0.3 is fine. And uh, you need just a bit more control. I think that uh, the real cutoff uh, 
to, to say that uh, an airbrush is not, uh, not, not an airbrush. A nozzle, a needle is not good for miniatures is uh, the 0.4. I think that uh, even with my control, I, I can't paint uh, a proper miniature, a good miniature with an 0.4. With a bit more control, you can, uh, you can use an 0.3 easily. Especially if it's uh, painting for gaming, if you don't really need to, to paint the shadows in the eye sockets, uh, go easily with an 0.3. Yeah, it's all about uh, trigger control. Cheating. Use color pencils, ink pens. And that's, that's ironic because uh, I don't think that uh, using... Uh, again, for, for me, it's, it's not cheating even if you're using uh, a, a pen or a marker uh, on your miniature. It's just choosing your tool. But in this particular case, I have to say that... Uh, I don't think you are cheating in the sense that you are saving something, you are saving time, but you are really complicating your life. <laughs> like uh, the trick uh, for uh, of uh, using uh, the the exacto pen, uh, the 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 ink pen for for the eyes. Uh, you have in your hands uh, the peak uh, of painting technology. That's the peak of painting technology. And uh, if you think that uh, you are Making your life easier using a pen to paint it, to paint an eye. That, that's perfect. That's a microscopic point up here. Just need to load it with paint, and that's making by itself the the finest points you can uh, even think about. So not all is not cheating, but it's not cheating even in the sense that uh, you're not making your life easier. Yeah, that, that's my point, uh, the, the idea that it's not a competition, but even if it's a, if it's a, a competition, even in the, in the world of uh, competition models, <coughs> sorry, competition painting, it just uh, the result uh, is the only thing that matters. You'll never find a judge uh, telling you, oh no, this, uh, this model has uh, more airbrushing than this one, uh, so this is better. So especially in the competitions, it's not, uh, it's not meaningful. Submitting. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the proper cheating. <laughs> Bringing a model that uh, you didn't paint. That, that's the cheating in the perfect sense of cheating. So my light is coming from this side, so I want to here in the face, uh, this middle line uh, is my light, but uh, even if it's quite flat here, I want to push a bit more the sensation of uh, movement of this side. So. Let's do a bit more. Here. Mm -hmm. Side the end, down here. Yeah, I think that's more than enough because again, I want to move to other tools. The end. It's probably on camera something like is not happening. <laughs> Anything is happening, but I'm just being uh, cautious. Let's do a bit more of round sensation here. Okay, that's enough. So the board timber did a couple of things for me. It created more uh, deeper shadows. It mixed a bit uh, with the greenish tone of the fake Verdaccio, creating uh, a more natural tone. And in the mix, uh, here you can, you can have more the feel of uh, 
Raw Sienna. That is a great tone to start uh, to paint a quick skin. And let's see if I have it handy. I'm still here. I'm still adapting to the new setup. <laughs> see, that's that's Raw Sienna. It's quite orangey, but uh, there's a lot of yellow inside here. And uh, you see that uh, here you have a lot of orange and uh, red tones. When you bring the content uh, of yellow you have here, you're basically moving uh, to these. And uh, the only real difference is that uh, that bit of blue that makes these uh, greenish makes uh, this mix uh, that could be physical mix or optical mix uh, a bit more uh, desaturated than this one a bit more natural so i'm moving into this tone that is a great uh, starting step for uh, for every skin but in this case i wanted to to be a bit more uh, i wouldn't say photorealistic but a bit more realistic so a great starting tone, a great mix between uh, this green and this idea of moving here. So I'm starting uh, this kind of, uh, of step here when I'm still in the high shadows, in the light shadows, or in the dark middles. We, we put a lot of labels on uh, these levels of uh, value and colors, but... Uh, you can see them in every direction. So let's talk about dark mid-tones. And uh, I have a couple of choices here. I prepared these two, and I probably, I probably want something more powerful. That's Quinacridone Red uh, is a great uh, warm uh, red tone uh, for everything uh, with blood under the skin. But uh, this is where I choose uh, to be more fantasy instead of being more realistic in this uh, in this modulation. So I want to exaggerate a bit. Same same idea, same kind of uh, end of my movement on the on the color wheel. But uh, yeah, I choose the fantasy saturation. And unload. And when the airbrush is unloading, I'll check the chat. Uh, you can probably find a conversion kit for your mother airbrush for a smaller needle. Oh yeah, every every brand of airbrushes, uh, of airbrushes has uh, different uh, nozzles and needles that uh, that are compatible with the same model. So. How loud is an airbrush? How loud is an airbrush compressor? Is uh, I think you can you can hear it uh, from my from my headset. That's the whole uh, noise it makes. And uh, it if you have a a compressor with a tank, uh, it will activate only to reset the pressure. So. It's, uh, it's not working uh, all the time. Uh, let's see. What are your thoughts on digital online miniatures painting competitions? Photo submission only. <laughs> uh, my thoughts about uh, digital uh, miniature competitions. Uh, they are uh, something cool to do in times like this, where you can't bring the models uh, in person, but uh, I always tell this, I, I paint for for uh, the in-person experience. And uh, I can create effects for uh, for pictures, like uh, the, the silhouettes we talked about uh, at the beginning, uh, they are super powerful on pictures. So I, I'm interested in this because uh, lately my painting is moving a bit because uh, I tell that uh, I paint for the 
for the real life experience, uh, but uh, in the last couple of years, uh, I'm taking uh, less and less commissions and doing a lot of videos and uh, stuff like this. So I, I'm starting noticing this kind of uh, shift uh, in my in what I, I think in my painting. I still do a lot of stuff to to make it interesting in person, like uh, the different uh, the different uh, textures, not not textures, finishes. So playing with uh, matte and uh, gloss and satin, that's all for uh, for the people seeing it in person. But uh, like uh, the thing of silhouettes, uh, that's a very photographic approach. Or like in this case. Uh, for the display model, because the display model is quite similar to a picture. So to summarize, uh, I think that uh, an online competition uh, is not, uh, can't have the whole picture of a model. You, you are painting something in uh, 3D with uh, physical paints, uh, with uh, uh, different finishes, with uh, the sense of the brush strokes, or not, if you like the smoothness, uh, or if you want to deliver that, and uh, in a picture you can't uh, you can't do all that. In a way, you are losing uh, all the finishes, and uh, you are softening the brush strokes, so eventual mistakes are well hidden and disappear. So there is uh, this kind of uh, downside. That's obviously me overthinking uh, the your question. <laughs> I think it's great to share your work and uh, to confront your painting uh, with other people's painting. That's really... I never took uh, this kind of... Uh, Sharps, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, that's my my Linus blanket. And it's not wool. Thank you so much. Sharps 74. Super, super appreciated. We're working late. Hi, Carlos. Welcome. E, yeah, I mix again uh, the K varnish with the ink, like I did uh, with the with Bart Amber. Again, is the thing that uh, I said before. I don't want to commit. Uh, I don't want to commit uh, to a finish right now. So. Sorry, I'm continuing my movement uh, in the shadows and uh, their tones uh, with uh, matte paint. But since uh, inks are not matte, especially not this magenta, I want to be to play safe. So same thing as before, but. Uh, more focused, smaller areas, you see that kind of shade. And again, I'll, I'll uh, come back with the, with the brush over everything, but uh, I want to work over the smoothness. There's a limit of how deep I can, uh, not deep how precise I can make uh, these shadows, but uh, see, that, that's an happy accident. This is a great happy accident. That's the rim of the, of the skirt blocking the spray from the airbrush, creating this, uh, this silhouette here. That's an happy accident I'll use, uh, I'll use later. And that's again the proof that uh, I'm still a noob in uh, 
detecting uh, the need of a silhouette. <laughs> That's a great place to, to have a silhouette because uh, you have uh, the two different planes of the, yeah. <laughs> Makes me laugh too, but I want to, to maintain a bit of uh, <laughs> the serious space. So down here. So uh, this color the is making uh, a couple of things for me. So is a tone that I'm applying to the shadows. Is a way to darken the shadows because again is overlapping to all the previous tones over a darker value. But uh, that's the first time. Uh, but Amber opened the way. But this is the first time where you start seeing this as a living, uh, living being. That's that kind of tone, that kind of uh, sensation of uh, the blood under the skin, uh, is what's really giving me life, literally. This is quite localized, but uh, if you want to do it with a brush. Uh, you can do like uh, an overall overall wash uh, on top of everything. It has to be transparent because uh, like uh, you don't want to lose uh, this kind of light up here, but you want to to make it in areas where uh, the vascularization and uh, this movement is a bit more meaningful. But uh, yeah, light wash uh, moving inside the crevices is. Uh, still super effective to create the same kind of sensation uh, and every time you have uh, a part of the skin that is flexed and uh, is uh, taking some weight or uh, some movement uh, that's the place where uh, even if it's not in the shadows where you can uh, adding this kind of you can add this kind of tone see like here that's on purpose i i don't want to concentrate too much uh, on the rim of the air because uh, that has to be a soft shadow but uh, i extend this tone a bit more because uh, we are in the area of the temples and uh, that's a place where you have always a lot of blood and obviously also the cheek under the muscle here again with the two ideas happening at the same time that uh, is not only the shadow but is only the the strength uh, she's using uh, to move and uh, carry the the head so you have the blood uh, moving around the edge of the muscle. There's a bit too much in there. But I can correct everything later. So this is a tricky shot shot for the airbrush not for the camera so i want to catch uh, the collar bones here and uh, yeah that's easy under the neck but uh, collar bones are a bit uh, are a bit tricky so i have to find an angle as i said before airbrushing is uh, a lot of trigger control but in this case uh, is about the angle let's say like this like in an angle like this uh, i can take uh, this uh, rim here and then uh, catch the collar bones uh, so the overspray and uh, the lack of uh, extreme precision uh, will uh, will make something for me with the right angle Yep. 
and uh, also here at the base of the neck. And that's, that's technically overspray. If you want to paint uh, or introduce the airbrush in your workflow, you have to accept uh, overspray as a as a thing. <laughs> you can contain it, uh, but if you want to avoid completely the overspray, the only way is uh, is masking. Like illustrational painters using the airbrush, uh, if they want a strong edge around uh, an airbrushed uh, area, they mask everything around. Because that, that's the only way. So if you are not willing to mask everything, uh, you have to start uh, using uh, the overspray to your own advantage. Something that uh, is completely part of the of the tool. So don't stress too much uh, trying to avoid it, uh, but uh Ooh, and all the spraying that I do on the on the towel is uh, is more a tick than anything else. Uh. So don't take this habit uh, like uh, something you have to do. It's because uh, I'm even painting uh, without. Uh, the need of talking in streaming, uh, I take a lot of time uh, looking at the model. And uh, it's just a thing I do. <laughs> it started because in my first airbrush, I had a lot of uh, accumulation here on the crown. So I used to move it constantly, but it's not something that happens anymore thanks to the, the high pressure in, with which I work. Uh, so it's just just a tick. <laughs> you can do it, but uh, it's not part of the process. Okay. Let's see the chat. This with relatives. Big for me. Oh yeah, Vince. Vince is a is a great painter. For me personally, Vince is uh, one of the best out there. I'll keep the revelation of the beanie after the 100k. <laughs> You'll have to wait and share to your friends. <laughs> uh, I have the same problem with contrast paints all over liquid kicks. See with varnish. Yeah, that's something that uh, came up. Uh, the the tendency of uh, contrast uh, to to move the pigments of inks. Uh, you have to consider a couple of, uh, of things. Inks uh, take a lot of time to dry in the inner molecular microscopic level. And uh, that's why they are so great for, uh, for this kind of blendings, because uh, what's happening uh, and I'll move uh, again on OBS to be sure that. What's happening is that uh, when I apply the two layers of inks, uh, it's not like uh, any other acrylic paint uh, where you have a proper overlap. Even if you are painting in transparency, you have uh, the pigments overlapping in the physical way. With inks, uh, both for uh, their composition and the liquid consistency, what you obtain is uh, at first, uh, an overlap, but uh, in hours, it takes hours, takes hours. You have this kind of uh, this kind of mixing. I don't know if, if <laughs> this is <laughs> the the best way to make you understand. But uh, yeah, the 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 layers uh, fuse together, and uh, this is something you have to consider both for uh, from the point of view of uh, color theory and mixing. So 
if I spray this on top of this, uh, even if the separation seems uh, really powerful uh, and uh, you don't work in transparency but you work uh, with opacity, you still obtain that kind of mix, so you have to be really careful. All this aggression to say that uh, they dry really slowly, especially if you are painting with a thicker layer than this one. Here, the layer is, uh, is very thin because, uh, again, I want to maintain the sketch uh, as much as possible for as long as possible. But um, if you are uh, priming a model with, uh, with inks, uh, you're probably using a thickness that is uh, too thick. And uh, when you bring something like this that is uh, filled with medium, uh, that medium uh, will act uh, with the ink. So the solutions are, Waiting a bit more, using uh, a, um, thinner layers, like in this case, uh, applying contrast over this uh, with this uh, super thin and uh, delicate application. If you use uh, 30 seconds of air dryer, you are, uh, you are sure that uh, you don't have any problems. But if you are layering uh, a thick layers of inks, uh, if you are layering on top uh, thick uh, washes and layers of these, uh, you have a couple of options. You can use uh, a bit of varnish uh, after the ink, but uh, what I suggest you is uh, a bit of varnish inside the ink, because it's altering uh, less uh, the, the finish of the, of the paint. Not really the finish. It's altering the finish of the paint because uh, it will make it uh, more matte like uh, I used here. But, uh, it uh, will not take away the depth of your layer over the sketch. So add a couple of drop, drops of these uh, inside your uh, heavy layer of ink and uh, you are safe. Much better than uh, painting and applying varnish on top of, uh, of your uh, paint job. So. Where we? Is it on YouTube? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I have to talk with Vince. I have to totally talk with Vince. Yeah, don't don't think that uh, I have something uh, against collaborations. Uh. I'm totally open, is that, uh, is only that, uh, it's really difficult to find the time. I think I froze, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's about uh, the paint lifting uh, problem. If you apply the inks in a very thin layer, there, there isn't any problem. Not at all. Okay, so I was working on the magenta and I think we are there. I want to insist a bit more in a couple of spots. Something like, uh, hmm, <laughs> now it's tricky because the space uh, is becoming less and less every time. Uh, definitely more under the chin. Come on, to make me okay. Oh, and I can use the airbrush. That's that's why it's great. And again, I talk always about positioning to tilt the model like this and catch uh, lips and nose and even upper eyelids. Not eyelids, eyebrows. No, I did. Yeah, the upper parts of the eye socket. Super gentle. And again, if you want to see the distance I'm using, I can tilt too much because I feel the airbrush too much. But uh, yeah, that's a lot of space between airbrush and model. And see the face? I catch all the natural shapes uh, quite automatically. 
And if I have to do this without uh, without talking, that that's probably an hour of work. With all, with all the overthinking of every step. A bit more here. And I consider this uh, more or less a sketch of the tones on top of the sketch of the values, because again, I want to come back with the brush to reinforce uh, every one of these, because uh, if you see, I talked uh, at the beginning of high saturation, and yeah, I have a bit of saturation, but uh, that's not really a crazy saturation as uh, I was saying in the description of my ideal model. That's the work of for the brush. In this case, I'm filling the gaps. I'm uh, I'm making the bulk of work. Okay, that's enough. You see how the shapes are enhanced uh, compared to to the original sketch. <laughs> Andrew, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks a million. Okay, I didn't. I didn't understand if uh... okay, that's <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's the real Vince here. <laughs> Hi Vince. How are you? Okay, I thought it was uh, a joke in the chat. I didn't I didn't see that uh, you were there. Yeah, I totally confirmed that uh, that's that's the main issue. And uh, I totally underestimated uh, the work that uh, having a Patreon brings and uh, I'm always late with answering to anybody. And I'm the worst in this. By the way, thank you so much for, uh, for your support, even if I'm so bad at keeping everything under control. I'm arriving there. Now with Diego at the daycare, it's it's everything is a bit more manageable. <laughs> okay, so now I want to show you something that uh, you don't expect. We talked about uh, the movement uh, on the wheel, and. Uh, I talked about uh, the need of warm tones in my general composition. So to create internal contrast, uh, from now, at this point, I have uh, only a lot of uh, warm colors. And uh, it's totally fine with the, with the general idea I have in mind. The skin is, uh, is making sense more and more in uh, that kind of uh, des real desert environment. And I probably, at the end, push a bit of... Uh, in a couple of spots with uh, with some yellow. But uh, I want to create more contrast internally. And uh, I want to create also a little bit of bridge uh, with the other tones I plan to use uh, on the inhuman elements. Uh, like uh, if you check the size of this head, uh, this is probably another kind of creature. Or at least I, I can paint it like a, a non-human creature. So I'll do it. And uh, I want to create that separation using a lot of cool tones. But uh, I can't separate everything from everything uh, this way. It will, it will appear like uh, something completely independent, something like uh, not belonging to the scene. So I'll complete my contrast for the skin, uh, moving from here 
and in this rim of the color wheel jumping here and uh, I'll fill this gap uh, thanks to the transparent overlap with the tones uh, I'll use but from here I want to jump directly to something like this that's a proper dark turquoise so I'm moving uh, in more than a half of the of the wheel because uh, that's my general tone that's the main slice of the wheel I want to use for the environmental and uh, cinematic scene and this is my way to create uh, that extreme contrast it will be just just a point uh, but uh, yeah I use this kind of color to create uh, this kind of uh, nuances here so a bit, a bit more than half but less than uh, three quarters that will be that will be my full modulation so unload and uh, since we were talking a lot about uh, airbrushing uh, I want to point out that uh, another reason that for which I'm not cleaning too much uh, the airbrush because uh, you saw that uh, every tone is meant to to overlap and to move uh, inside one another so I don't care if I have a bit of uh, magenta left uh, down there it's not super important to clean it in that way if I have to paint uh, a little dot of white uh, on top of a black let's say or, or really dark uh, dark area I can do that kind of uh, that kind of uh, oh, it's super tight that kind of super clean because I don't want to to ruin uh, my separation uh, contaminating uh, the white with black creating uh, a less effective white so oh don't worry I'm not stressed about the chat I really want to, to participate uh, in the conversation it's not a stress but it's really a pleasure so So Vince, officially we have to talk. <laughs> and I'm super glad that you are here. <laughs> it's an honor. Okay, in this case, uh, pure turquoise. I'm not adding uh, the um, matte varnish because, uh, uh, let's switch to OBS. So. I don't have the lag on myself because in this case I'm using a property of uh, the glossy satin finish that is uh, to increase the depth uh, of uh, any color if you if you look at something uh, matte compared to something uh, really glossy you get uh, you lose a lot of uh, details you lose a lot of uh, definition and uh, perception of depth and uh, everything glossy thanks to this uh, kind of uh, ability of swallowing the details and the information uh, tends to look like uh, darker and deeper so in the shadows if i can i use something that has uh, that tiny bit of glossiness to increase the, the darkness it can produce and this is uh, the quick part because uh, I don't have a lot of uh, surfaces to cover but is where I have to be more uh, more precise so I want to reinforce uh, like here that shadow that uh, creates the the silhouette uh, in the lower part of the arm you 
see the extra depth. And I talked about uh, fantasy colors, but uh, the better, better term is uh, fantasy saturations. Because if you check a picture, a magazine picture of a of any male or female bodybuilder or actor or superhero, you have this kind of tones. And uh, if we are talking about uh, superheroes or that kind of movies, uh, you even have this kind of, uh, of saturations. So they are part of, uh, of reality, like we talk about uh, blood under the skin. What we do in fantasy is uh, to exaggerate uh, those sensations. So not really fantasy tones because I'm not using uh, like a, a green for the skin, uh, like in this case, but uh, you see a fantasy spread of saturations. I'm insisting a bit more here because uh, that's my turning point between uh, this side and that's my kind of uh, the, the terminator of the light. And uh, here I can push a bit more. I don't have to cross uh, too much over here. So I can push the blue on the terminator. Here in the That's a better angle to catch uh, the... Okay. <laughs> I blocked. <laughs> I catch my head inside the, the stand for the camera. Yeah, I'm crossing a bit on the, on the air, but here I'm working on the skin, so I'm willing to pay the price of... Uh, adjusting the white on the air if I can get a nice shadow on the end of the skin. It's always a trade. You can't have everything at the same time. You see that I kept uh, the blue only for the shadow sides. I'm not really using it all around here. That's a bit uh, out of the spectrum. I probably add uh, a glaze at the end, not at the end, I glaze with the brush uh, working uh, like around uh, the rim of the of the leather here to create a bit of uh, projected shadow, but uh, that's a work for the brush. I can insist a bit more there, but yeah, that's another thing that you have to choose if uh, if it's worthy. I can spray from here, creating a bit of that rim, but uh, it's a lot of work uh, to obtain uh, an effect that uh, with two glazes, probably three, I can do with the brush. So. Not worthy. Here I can push a bit more because everything is uh, hidden between the skull and the and the knife, and I'm super happy about this uh, happy accident. <laughs> it will add a lot, a lot. Yeah, that's it. I saw now that uh, I want to add a bit of magenta on this other 
chick. <laughs> it's a bit too different from uh, from the other one. And quick clean. Since I have a bit of free time, check. <laughs> this is a bust of my mom after I did something forbidden. <laughs> Heavy ended mom. And uh, I'll move a bit up in the chat because I think I missed a lot of stuff. Ooh, 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 ooh. ooh another one living in Ireland. Tuna color. Will that work? My pressure right now. It's always the same, but uh, I, I have to check it because that's a question that didn't came up uh, recently. I met uh, almost a three bar. That means uh, about a 2.7 bar and uh, almost 40 PSI, almost 40. almost 40. Okay. I'll do this quick thing because I'm sure that I forget uh, that I want a bit of magenta here, so I'll use your time to fix my mistake. Where are you from? Ooh. I'm Italian and I come from uh, Rimini, that is a small uh, touristic city on the Adriatic. And since uh, nobody outside Italy knows uh, Rimini, it's uh, in Emilia Romagna. You can, you can use Bologna as, uh, as a reference, as point uh, on the map, uh, and then move on the coast. It's a very touristic city and uh, gets crazy during summer. The population like it's 10 times bigger, even more. But it's difficult to explain uh, <laughs> because yeah, it's not a big center. Okay, probably a bit too much, but uh, I think it has uh, some charm. Yeah, high pressure. And I use an high pressure because uh, if you think about it, uh, Richard, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Gnocchi <laughs> fritti. Noi siamo più da piada. Noi siamo quelli della piada. E se la chiamate piadina mi offendo, eh? <laughs> e... And now I'm talking Italian. Um, what I was saying? High pressure. Why high pressure? Because if you use an high pressure, let's see if I can make an example. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to understand that uh, high pressure makes... Uh, the spray more precise. In the terms of uh, you don't have a lot of uh, overspray around. And here was like three fingers away from uh, from the the paper. And you can see that uh, there's almost uh, no overspray. Not really overspray. Not 
dotting around. Focus. Okay. Yeah, it's clearly a, a dot made with an airbrush, but uh, you see how condensed and uh, and precise it is. Even spraying it, it was something like like this away from the paper. So high pressure is uh, more difficult to control uh, for the spiders because the spiders come from uh, that same pressure that uh, push the paint away from the center. So that's create uh, all the spiders. But uh, if you are able with the right movement of the trigger and uh, again, that, that's another trigger, distance, you get uh, the super precision that uh, a low pressure can give you. It's, uh, of course, uh, a personal choice because uh, I feel to be able to control better this kind of behavior instead of uh, the low pressure. So I don't have, uh, if, you, if you look at something like, uh, yeah, I don't want to make names. There are other painters that uh, spray something from here, this close. And uh, for me, this is problematic because uh, most of the time, uh, this occludes my vision. So if I stay in gear like this, uh, that, that's my point of view. I, I move the airbrush and the model so you can see. And if I spray this close to the model, that's what I see. So my solution was to move away and increase the pressure. So that's my point of view, the, the real th things I see from my eyes. And from here, yeah, it's a bit more difficult because uh, it's less intuitive uh, to, to shot from this distance and catch what you need. But uh, after a bit of practice, it's not, not, not so complicated. The air can move only in, uh, in a straight path, in a, in a line. So it's not so difficult to align uh, model and, uh, and airbrush. So that's the full, uh, the full story of why high pressure <laughs> and why I think it's still, uh, still superior to low pressure. Thank you so much again, guys. So much. <laughs> I forget about this part uh, every time and uh, when uh, you start donating like this, it's, it's, it's always strange. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, 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 let's see. I want to say that the uh, Zorpal back in August 25th, idea for GW Core City models, I put it together. Nice. The all that uh, undead with the Zorpal palette can only be super cool. Ooh, that, that's another thing that I want to I want to ask you. I don't have the, the box here. You know the 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 aesthetic of the box, uh, of the, the artwork on the box. I was a bit tempted to try that kind of uh, white, uh, gray and red uh, kind of uh, painting. Is something that uh, can be interesting or uh, just uh, an extreme uh, deformation? That's something I'm super curious. And another disclaimer, if you, if you hear <laughs> something like a, a, a farting noise uh, during the stream, uh, these are my new lights, <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> My new lights make make farts. Can you hear them? I, I had to to say these at the beginning because uh yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't want to commit to, to, to the full box in that style, but maybe a couple of pieces, maybe one of the heroes. I really want to try.
<laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm unsure if it's one of the things that uh, is just an exercise to be an exercise of aesthetic, but uh, nobody will use uh, that tutorial. <laughs> I'm really concerned about this stuff. Film version of Cursida experimental mode. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the said because uh, I think I can uh, it can work uh, for a single model, but I'm not sure, super sure about uh, the unit. I'm not super sure about the unit. Okay, so full spectrum of tone I used uh, this far. It's uh, well black and white, uh, and whoop, let's switch to. OBS, whoop. One, two, three, and four. And uh, you see that uh, these are not the tones uh, you immediately link to a, to a skin tone. But overlapping, uh, you obtain uh, this. I know it's, it's not super, super intuitive. Uh, you have to work a bit with colors to to see how they can behave. And uh, the the inks are here just for uh, the ready transparency. Same for for uh, contrast paint. You can do the same uh, with uh, opaque paints and add uh, medium and thinner. Is not uh, I use this stuff just because it's uh, quick to use. You saw I I added just a bit of varnish uh, to tone down the glossiness, but uh, most of the times. Uh, I use them straight from the bottle. So that's uh, the commission painter deformation that uh, I love to mix, uh, but uh, in uh, certain kind of works, uh, you don't have the time to do it. And I want to complete this progression. And I hope that uh, I have enough because it's almost finished with a bit of yellow. And uh, here I have to be careful because, uh, whoop, this is a tricky beast. It's uh, labeled as transparent, but uh, it's transparent, yeah. But the saturation is so high, is so powerful that uh, turns everything into, into yellow. So I have to be really gentle because uh, this yellow here will be a unifying tone, uh, mostly eating the higher mid-tones uh, and lights. So it has to be very transparent uh, and the application has to be very gentle. And this is one of those cases that, uh, yeah, I trust my control on the trigger, but uh, I don't want to risk here. So I'll add uh, airbrush thinner because I want uh, that kind of extra transparency. And the extra transparency comes from uh, the dilution of the pigments that you have inside here. So it's really making them more separated between uh, one another. And uh, yeah, I use the same trick uh, of mixing. Don't do this with, with colors because you don't have the perception of uh, what colors uh, is coming out from the mix. Uh, you see how, how dark is inside here, even with three big lamps uh, pointed almost perpendicularly on top. But uh, for mixing uh, color with basically water, I don't need more than that. And since it's not uh, varnish, I'm using uh, just uh, the dropper I have inside the bottle because uh, it's not really changing my the content of my pot. And uh, again, play safe. In this case, I test outside the model. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Still a bit too much. Still a bit too much. And 
and uh, let's use a neutral dropper so I don't have that extra yellow coming in. Let's see. Yeah, that's more like it. I want this, not this. And it took only a few drops more of, uh, of thinner. So, that's done. Here. Oh, let's focus a bit better. La. Switch again to the chat before starting. Yeah, real color wheel. That that's the one uh, I downloaded, but uh, it's it's named uh, real color wheel because uh, of the fact that it's based on uh, cyan, magenta, and uh, cyan, magenta, and yellow. So it's not really uh, really that you need uh, this one, but uh, yeah, I wanted to show you I want to show you the difference between uh, the classic. Uh, school color wheel see the main difference is that uh, this color wheel uh, that <laughs> there are faction on these uh, whoop. there's people that is uh, taking completely the scientific side of the matter saying that this is the only way and uh, yeah th this is the only way for for mixing properly because uh, these is showing you the full spectrum of mixings you can create uh, with uh, cyan magenta and yellow and what is in between and uh, putting these as uh, main tones of your scheme of your construction of the wheel uh, it changes a bit uh, the complementary tones because uh, now facing this green uh, i don't have a proper red i have a magenta and uh, facing uh, yellow as complementary you have blue while uh, in this system based on uh, a red blue and yellow here yellow is facing violet as complementary and uh, this is not super correct from the point of view of uh, pigments that's the main issue of this palette this is a great palette to understand uh, in the general movement of the wheel so uh, cold and warm tones uh, it's it's really useful for mixing if you are uh, a beginner with this uh, so it's telling you an ideal well not really good for mixing relatively good for mixing because uh, not all these mixes uh, are really perfect in uh, the execution but gives you a lot of information you have uh, a nice value scale uh, here on the bottom and that's the value i always talk about uh, the value scale from uh, black and white and uh, yeah a lot of information about uh, mixes and uh, even uh, color uh, harmonies uh, more than schemes and uh, i have a couple of videos about these uh, the triadic the split complementary the complementary but uh, for me blue is not complementary to orange that's because uh, pigments uh, don't behave like light so when you mix uh, when you use a cyan magenta yellow for uh, your mixes or better as base for your wheel uh, and uh, you use these complementaries uh, these complementaries are the ones that really neutralize themselves uh, in a neutral gray and uh, at the end in a chromatic black so i'm condensating a lot of videos here <laughs> but uh yeah that's that's more correct for uh for mixing because it's the real behavior of uh, of pigments in a system that gives you thanks to the starting points uh, a larger spectrum of uh, mixable tones so if you mix uh, cyan with yellow you obtain a really powerful saturated beautiful green and uh, again red is not a prime a primer primary sorry starting to be late it's not a real primary because I can mix a red uh, with magenta and yellow. And it's a beautiful red. It's almost like uh, cadmium or uh, no, a more powerful red, something like uh, naphthol. 
dapple crimson, something like that. But really powerful saturated primary red. So that, that's all uh, the reasoning uh, on these two. But uh, this is a bit more scientific in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, color mixing and pigments. Uh, this is more classical, but uh, it's still useful to understand uh, that this part of the wheel uh, creates contrast with this side of the wheel by temperature. And uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of, uh, you know that I'm really based on, uh, on science, but uh, there's an emotional part on colors that uh, transcend this, uh, this uh, mathematical equation. Uh, so that's important for mixing, but uh, don't go too, too much into that uh, rabbit hole. Oh, sorry, I missed something in the chat, something important. <laughs> Thank you so much. Geek that custom, customs. Oh, and I love to, to have other people coming into, into commissions and uh, th there's a lot of people that feels that the, the competition in that, but uh, there's there's market for everyone, and uh, it's it's a great uh, satisfaction to to sell something uh, something you painted and something that uh, is appreciated to the point that uh, people want to pay for that. And it's not about the payment uh, really; it's about the satisfaction. I have to admit that uh, I started uh, being a commission painter because. Uh, I don't stand to see my models, uh, old models on the shelf. I'm super critical on my own work. And after a bit of time, uh, you always get better. So it's difficult to accept uh, what you do, what you did in the past. Okay, so light pass of yellow. And I think we can wrap up the skin at least this color sketch of the skin super gentle focus sorry oh more like this I'm not risking anything. It's, it's difficult to see even uh, the yellow on top of white. This is the kind of uh, intensity of saturation I'm using because uh, I want more uh, warm tones. I want this uh, to blend everything into the light of one uh, warm sun, but... Uh, I still have to have the space uh, to come back with the brush. And um, I know that uh, a lot of you have problems uh, with uh, the the step between moving from these uh, to the work with the brush. And it's something that uh, I totally understand because uh, working on this kind of uh, super smooth and perfect finish in terms of uh, smoothness uh, can be can be scary, but uh, I'll finish for sure this model uh, on uh, on a series of videos. I have only to decide if it's one video or a series. And uh, but yeah, I want to do more of this stuff for the channel, so that step will be for sure in a video. And see, I'm, I forgot to tell, I'm uh, using this kind of angle that is uh, like avoiding to touch the shadows because uh, I want this tone only in the main uh, higher lights to connect even better the bartumber, magenta, but I don't want to interfere too much uh, with uh, turquoise. Yep. 
here. And you see, it's not even uh, an excessive stretch uh, putting uh, a warm light here because uh, this will be a, a super powerful saturated red air. So having a bit of bouncing uh, warm light from here is not so so strange or unnatural. So even if I'm uh, technically in a shadow area, I can introduce that kind of yellow there. That probably will turn it more into an orange when I'll add the air. And by the way, my plan for, uh, so you'll have a little spoiler on, on the video, uh, I'll prime the air with, uh, with contrast. <laughs> I'll probably add a, a couple of drops of, uh, of water, but uh, I want to use uh, the light red. Uh, oh, it's called Blood Angel. Yep. This will be the base for my air. Because again, yeah, it's quick. <laughs> Makes the job. It's a base tone. And uh, since I want uh, a super powerful uh, concentration of pigment here, I don't care about uh, this, uh, this uh, transparent layering. I can start uh, from my saturated point and then modulate on top of this, but uh, contrasts are, are useful for that. A bit more. You see that uh, even if I started from a, a very unhealthy green, uh, she's becoming a tanned, uh, healthy girl. <laughs> oh, I'm spreading yellow everywhere. Oh. I can't lower my guard now. Again, I lost uh, a bit of the highest lights, but uh, I want to come back with the... They were too high anyway with from the initial white. But uh, this gives me the space to come back. If I keep uh, the maximum light uh, and it arrives almost to white, I don't have the space to put uh, brush strokes. I don't have the space to put... Uh, other tones. Uh, so consider that uh, you don't lose uh, anything. There's a lot of people that's worried to, to lose something from uh, the previous step, but you are always gaining. Where you are layering, again, the back is better than, than the front. <laughs> yeah, because I, am, I was working on top of a better sketch, uh, so obviously it's better than the front. So don't worry about uh, losing stuff when you are layering tones. Everything is there. And uh, it's something that uh, I feel that uh, I didn't really solve in my videos uh, because for, for uh, their naturally, natural storytelling, uh, you have to do steps. Uh, but, uh, you know, you are painters. So you know that it uh, doesn't work like that. It's a fluid uh, kind of thing. <ride> ciao ciao Italia <ride> dopo ve lo faccio ciao ciao Italia lo faccio ma serio so I'm checking questions uh, 
Thanks. Sorry, I'm checking what uh, you were saying down there. You want to do this piece in a cold atmosphere, would uh, that affect your choice of view? Would you still push into a yellow highlight? No, not at all. I would push probably on the opposite. A very simple kind of uh, cold highlight. Uh, probably I would, I would have done uh, the same uh, IDDR with the yellow with something like this or a great tone to do that kind of uh, cold sensation uh, is this one from uh, from the contrast range uh, very subtle very light very cold even if uh, it has that uh, bit of green inside so it's not uh, well you have a lot of green also here but uh, it's not a proper blue but it's great to give a natural wintry look and uh, no I, I would have shift uh, shifted everything uh, in uh, in the opposite way so these tones uh, in the highlights uh, because again don't don't concentrate too much uh, on the value of the spot uh, this could be a, a light you need only to add uh, extra thinner and transparency so think only about the tone and uh, yeah, you can uh, totally switch the scale and move uh, through here. Then better than this, uh, and I have it, uh, I lost it. I add it on the table uh, is a violet because you can bridge a bit better these two since uh, this will be a light. I can find a violet. <laughs> it was here. But yeah, violet. Imagine this to be a violet. And then move to, not really this one, because uh, at this point, this is not uh, super meaningful in terms of, uh, of this kind of uh, movement, because that's more a bridge from the warm on warm. And... Uh, Violet here, magenta here. Again, don't think about the values. But this is more bluish than turn into violet because uh, it's the transitional point between these two. And uh, shadow with this. That's a nice uh, classic wintry tone where uh, you have the environmental cold light uh, and then a lot of uh, vascularization from... Uh, fighting the the cold outside and really gives the idea of a uh, cold environment and the skin reacting to that uh, kind of environment but this is just an example using the same kind of uh, movement of the wheel the idea is exactly that uh, that's why I, I love to keep the wheel uh, always handy is that uh, boop, boop, boop. It's a circle for a purpose. <laughs> it's a circle because uh, you can move this side, you can move this side, so you can start from here and move here. We are too focused on uh, on the outer rim, so we consider only the colors, but uh, in your example, uh, your movement will have been uh, light, uh, and then it's, it's not a, an arc around the wheel. It's like a curve inside uh, so you are going into shadows, but with this tone, and lights uh, with this tone. And uh, in my progression is uh, light uh, with these tones, uh, and then going down. So it, it's a spiral. This is useful for mixing and understanding complementaries, but uh, all this stuff here in the middle is, uh, is what uh, is really important. And again, the circle. Doesn't matter where you start. You can always uh, move th from here through here. But for the reason of contrast, you want to stop uh, probably halfway because uh, if you get into the opposite uh, 
and then you start coming back, you lose the contrast because uh, he's coming back again. So you want to go the other half and maybe a bit farther if you need, but uh, it depends on the on the course you're using. But again, circle and consider always the middle. So in your progression, if you are reasoning about the colors, uh, then you modify the value, but uh, colors and values are always two separate things. And uh, I saw other question. Yeah, big child created. I think it's called Northern Winds. Oils versus enamels. That's that's a great question. That's a great question. I have both, but I prefer oils. And I prefer oils because they give me the same behavior of enamels, but more time. And uh, if I'm using oils, uh, it's because uh, I want uh, that behavior and uh, that extra time, because weathering uh, takes time. And uh, you want to move uh, weathering a bit more. That's, again, personal. And uh, so for me, is a is a matter of uh, the time they give me. And uh, I don't know. In general, I think that uh, oils are a bit easier to use than enamels because uh, enamels, if you don't buy those kind of uh, pre-mixed uh, kind of stuff, uh, comes in this kind of uh, pots, kinds of. Oh, let's check on OBS. You have this kind of stuff here. And uh, they are really complicated to, to open and use. I, I use the back of a spoon to open this, uh, this lid, or, <laughs> or I have to do like this. With, yeah, it's, it's not super, super handy, in my opinion. And uh, then you have uh, to mix them well, uh, because uh, they tend to separate, and then you have to, to mix with the toothpick uh, or something else. It's Yeah. While uh, with oil paint, uh, you just uh, take a tube, uh, put it a bit on the palette, like uh, a heavy body acrylic. Uh, it's just, uh, I think, it's more steps. But uh, in the practical use of these two is uh, the real difference is, is uh, in the drying time this is fast almost like acrylics and uh, if you need that kind of speed uh, it's not uh, you you can overcome uh, the the strange pot ooh, 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 ooh. The model is from, from Big Child Creatives. And I think I'll put a link uh, under the video. So since a lot of you asked. Thank you so much. Skipping McGaggins. Hey, I did it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, can you give me a tip on how to mix a pretty saturated dark red with chimera colors. Mm, sure. It's what do you mean with the dark red? Because uh, we are moving uh, it's a cold red, it's a uh, it's a uh, it depends on the, the temperature you want to mix. I think that's the main thing to to consider if you need uh, a dark uh, dark red but yeah I, I can make some examples but uh, I want to solve this question first first uh, uh, Daniela is asking uh, what are those uh, those dots and uh, this is just for the because I downloaded this uh, this color wheel and these are uh, commercial tones tones that have uh, a precise, commercial, classic, uh, academic name. So it's just to say that uh, every 
tone uh, with a dot, uh, you can find it uh, as pre-mixed, uh, pre-made in a, any art store. So it's just that. Come si usa rispetto ad esempio il marrone o un beige? Yeah, they, they don't, uh, don't mean anything about... Uh, they don't, are not important... Uh... No, no, I... Don't worry, Daniele, I, I'll translate uh, on, the, on the road. They are just uh, here to say that if you need these, you can buy it. And uh, you can click uh, on the dot uh, and have uh, the commercial name or even the, the way to, to mix it. But it's more for, for that. Oh, sorry, Raphael, I, I can add uh, stuff to the description only at the end of the video. But uh, Big Child Creatives, they are one of the big ones in the display model field. And uh, I think that uh, if you move up on the, on the chat, you can find uh, the name without my horrible spelling. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I got my copy of Curse City yesterday. And uh, I have still everything on the sprue. It is on the shelf uh, right here but uh, I didn't start uh, the real work, not even building. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it will be a quick thing because I want to play. I really need to play. So as always, uh, I talked uh, a lot, sorry. <laughs> but I'm really happy to put on a list, uh, at least the skin. In my plan, uh, I have the colors also to prime a bit uh, the skulls. Oop. Oop. I knew that uh, I tend, uh, well, I know that I tend to over talk, but uh, I think that that's a good introdu introduction to this kind of uh, behavior of transparent paints. Because again, in the speed of the of the videos, I can't uh, really go through the whole uh, thinking on how they interact and uh, how I plan this kind of uh, movement of the wheel because of the environment I have in mind. So I'm glad to add uh, to have had the time uh, to explain that process. Again, it's still very rough in terms of. Uh, color composition and modulation because uh, not rough in terms of uh, color application because with airbrush and uh, and inks you can get only total smoothness but you see how they alter the sketch and uh, like here at the beginning you can take uh, you can go back at the beginning of the video I had much more light here and now I have uh, what I feel it's more more correct like uh, a bit of a silhouette around here and the sensation of a silhouette around here. That's why, yeah, I take picture of the sketch, but uh, the sketch is the sketch. It's not, uh, is a guide, but it's not uh, a guide to, that you have to follow super precisely. Like I'll keep for sure this light here, that's obvious, that's, the strong light on top of the skulls, but uh, everything will be refined even in this first stage and even more with the brush because with the brush now I can, uh, if uh, I don't like to work uh, like all the skin and then go back to other parts. So my, my way to, to proceed is uh, to do this same uh, color sketch on top of the value sketch uh, for everything. And uh, the hair, will be done 90% uh, with a brush because I want to catch that kind of uh, movement. I don't want to be smooth like this. I want to really use the brush strokes to drive uh, your eyes in a certain direction and movement. Same thing for the skulls. I probably give just uh, a bit of bar timber on top uh, and then do everything with, uh, with stippling. And this will create, uh, these are just uh, three macro categories of, uh, of the main areas of the, of the model, but uh, smoothness here, 
and then I have the contrast of the weathering on top because again I want uh, blood splatters, uh, mud splatters, uh, and probably a strong uh, tribal line going down. I have to see. Brush strokes uh, to simulate the strands uh, and steepling uh, all over everything. Skin uh, will be probably a cross hatching. So lines, 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 lines uh, to give the idea of the old leather. A lot of steepling on the skulls. Uh, and uh, yeah, this will be. Since it's quite big as an head, uh, a bit of airbrush uh, to set uh, some tones. Uh, and then uh, the process will be similar to the to the one I used uh, on the bust of the old guy in Mordheim. Uh, so a lot of little lines. And uh, it's, it's something that uh, bothered me a bit, uh, that uh, I have a lot of stuff sculpted. That's, for me, the downside of digital sculpting. That's, you give me too much. That's stuff that uh, a few years ago, and in, uh, in real sculpting, you don't have on the model. Like this, this is something that I hate. I have to paint these, uh, let's focus, as leather, because it has the leather pattern already inside here. And I have to follow this pattern. If I want to change something, I have to work inside the borders of this, uh, of this texture. I want to paint this stuff. I don't want it to sculpt it. You can give me the roughness of the, of the skulls, the, the lines uh, of the bones fused. Uh, but yeah, here, the, the stubble of, uh, of the shaved hair, that's too much. I want to paint this stuff. And I want to choose if I want him completely shiny bold or uh, with stubbles. I close with a rant. <laughs> and I'll check again the, 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 the chat. Find it. Oh yeah, put the link. I, I'm always happy to, to support uh, to support the the model and the companies that make uh, these beautiful models. Ooh, Magor asked me if I use uh, I use a lot of uh, warm tones because, uh, especially in these uh, in these models, because uh, last year I painted everything uh, in uh, winter settings, everything. One year ago, I was obsessed with snow and uh, ice, and you can tell from uh, from the videos from that area. And uh, yeah, it, it's just because I, I painted so many models, like uh, my Robert Baratheon, the post-apocalyptic post -apocalyptic guy from Chimera, and another couple of models uh, all in... Uh, in uh, winter tones, because again, I want in, I want, I was in the exploration of uh, snow and ice, so that's just a reaction. Since you are in the vision, you can show how to paint your eyes. <laughs> well, the talking we came from the paint. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Ooh, I'm a bit newer when it comes to using proper artistic colors. Is there a process between choosing thalo blue, red uh, versus green shade? Do the complements change drastically? Uh, they are really different. It's, uh, it's the difference between a cold blue and a warm blue. It's massive. So the green shade is obviously more colder and the red shade is, uh, is warmer. So... You can use uh, them uh, when you need uh, a specific uh, turn into that uh, into that uh, spectrum. So the process is uh, is the one I I showed before. It depends on where you want to go on the wheel. 
So if you want to move uh, from here to these tones, uh, start with the Italo Blue Red Shade. If you want to move from here to these tones here, go with the Green Shade. That's uh, your pot of paint telling you where it wants to go. That's the only process. Uh, I have an iWatt Eclipse uh, with a stock thermal shock. Should I look for uh, uh No, I, I talked about uh, this before, the, uh, the needle uh, and the nozzle. Uh, I like to paint with an 0.2, but I think that for miniatures, uh, you can still work properly with an 0.3. 0.4 is a bit too much uh, for my taste and for my skills. Uh, and I think it's better for terrains or if you have to paint only monsters, if you have to paint only great and clean ones, uh, you can go with an 0.4. But uh, if you have already an airbrush with a no point uh, 35, uh, it's a bit more into the, the four. And uh, you can train your hand and your skills to paint with that. Uh, or uh, I, for me, 0.2 is the jack of all trades, just that. I can do big stuff, I can do more stuff, that's the only the only thing. But you can totally paint miniatures, especially for gaming, with an 0.3. Uh, if someone is new to miniature painting, what is a good way to experiment for the only purpose to learn? Paint miniatures. <laughs> and uh, yeah, paint, paint. And I talked about this uh, with uh, one of my patrons. Uh, about uh, exercises and uh, what to do to improve your painting skills, uh, paint, paint stuff. Because uh, every model is super situational and uh, this is different, uh, totally different from these and any other model or, uh, or these. Uh, the, the need of every model is different. So I really, believe that uh, there isn't a single exercise or pool of exercises to to become better painters without actually painting uh, a lot of models so paint stuff paint stuff uh, and uh, don't th that's something that uh, i i don't agree with uh, with a lot of uh, other teachers or painters give you a limited time frame because uh, if you give yourself uh, a, an open-ended uh, window of time to paint a model uh, you'll never end that model you'll never finish that model so give yourself a reasonable amount of time if you want to challenge yourself uh, give you a very limited time frame uh, but uh, yeah the trick is only paint a good exercise is uh, to paint a model using only one technique. I think that, that's uh, a great way to improve in that technique. So you want to improve in glazing, uh, paint your model 90% with glazing. You want to improve in uh, layering, uh, paint everything with layering. Then you can maybe smooth at the end with a bit of, uh, with a couple of glazing. With glazes, but uh, focus your attention on the technique uh, you want to develop. If you want to develop a, a precise technique, but in general you have to paint. <laughs> paint uh, limited time frame. Uh, if you want, to, that's that's pretty obvious. Is not <laughs> is not a great revelation. If you want to get better at mixing, uh, work with the limited palette uh, because uh, if you have access to every possible color. And if you indulge in uh, using those pre-made colors, uh, you'll never get better in understanding how these uh, interact. So, yeah, it's a, it's a very practical hobby. It's a very, it's like pretending to, to become, uh, I don't know why I talk about uh, wood so much tonight. If you want to be a better woodworker, you have to uh, actually cut some uh, some planks. <laughs> it's not only about uh, YouTube videos. Mm. 
Ooh, that, that's a great question uh, about textures. And that's also the it's a good questions about uh, question about uh, in textures. And uh, that's also why I find so difficult to explain uh, textures, because for me, painting textures is all about uh, studying textures. Like if I want to paint uh, these, uh, and let's switch again to OBS, that's the best way to understand how to paint this. And then f crack the code of this, uh, of this texture. So dot, 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 dot. So there, there is kind of a pattern, white, 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 uh, and these are heavy dots that can be simulated with, uh, with uh, heavy, heavy body paint. So dot of white, dot, dot, dot. Uh, and then you have uh, a line of uh, something like Space Wolf Gray, then white again, all dots. And that's how you crack uh, this one. And uh, I wanted to be able to, to zoom in more. That's a bit different. But if you take a look at it, if you want to, to represent this kind of cloth, it's a little line. Line, 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 and that's the pattern uh, you have to do with the air, with the brush. And now, now everything is complicated with uh, with all the colors, but uh, yeah, that that's the only way to understand textures. If you want to to create the texture of a like th th this is a trick that. Uh, Taught me Riccardo Agostini. He is a genius for this kind of stuff. He's a great painter. He works for Chimera as box art painter. And uh, to paint uh, realistic metal, to study realistic metal, he used. Uh, I was looking for the actual thing. Uh, the back of a spoon. The back of a spoon. That's genius. And. Uh, uh, I have a spoon here somewhere here. So I, I can't take credit for this uh, great, great idea. But yeah, you want to paint realistic metal? That's realistic metal. Oh, sorry, focus. All these little scratches, marks, lines, uh, the behavior of the reflection. Uh, so you want to crack uh, the the code of true metallic metal and these textures. A spoon. <laughs> that's brilliant. See, that's not uh, smooth, not at all. There are all little dots and lines, uh, and uh, the witness marks uh, of uh, the the metal stretched. That's the way to crack uh, the code of textures. And let's see. Ah, you waited uh, at the end for, for a ton of questions. <laughs> uh, how did you took care of the problem of too much transpiration of water through the paper of the red grass wet palette with liquid colors like Vallejo? Mm, I learned <laughs> how to work around it. I didn't change anything. It's just... Uh, and uh, it's a good point because... Uh, I complained about that uh, in the first video, in the video about uh, the wet palettes. Uh, it's something that uh, with just the use, uh, the difference was minimal. It's, it's, it's a bit of transpiration of water, but uh, it's not like uh, a floating amount, of, floating amount of water on the palette. So naturally I came up with a, with a way to use it. And uh, I put uh, on the on the wet palette on the same wet palette even uh, gold and eye flow and uh, inks uh, is something that uh, you understand how to how to handle. And uh, I think I answered every question. 
because I want to close. Uh, <laughs> what color your favorite? Uh, I shift, but uh, if I have to pick one, uh, this one something like an electric blue. It's my favorite color, and I have a, a big tattoo on the on the leg with this uh, color, <laughs> like a a brush mark, like a brush stroke, a big brush stroke. Uh, do you ever go for metallic brands? <laughs> How tall you are? Uh, that I made the conversion in feet yesterday. Six feet and and something. <laughs> oh, fun from Galway. I love Galway. It's a beautiful city. Uh, do you have a go to metallic brand? Yeah, scale 75. Scale 75 makes my favorite metallic paints. I love the the thickness. I love uh, the consistency. I love the gel uh, sensation. I love the, um, the 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 concentration of the the metallic flakes uh, is uh, is great. For me, metallic paints is a uh, scale 75 uh, scale color. Yeah, the, the basic uh, the their basic line, like uh, these ones. And uh, oh, sorry, yep. but I have to say I love the these metallics. Uh, but you saw in the videos I'm using mostly these two, and uh, then I add uh, inks and other stuff to make my own color. So of this box uh, I use only these two. So if you have to buy a couple of metallic tones. Uh, these two, maybe even heavy metal if you need uh, something lighter, but speed metal is a bit too light. And uh, I do exactly the same for the for the gold box. I use uh, Necro, Viking, uh, and sometimes I skip Dwarven. I use for highlights uh, Elven Gold, and you see that the only one is uh, almost almost finished. But yeah, scale 75. Mm -hmm. Quanto è differente la carta red grass rispetto a una carta da forno? Uh, Daniele asked me, asked me uh, how different is the paper of the red grass uh, stay wet palette, the red grass palette uh, compared to the parchment paper. A lot. <laughs> it's better, it's better. Is uh, is difficult uh, to to move uh, from pars parchment paper to the red grass palette uh, because again there is that difference in uh, transpiration, uh, but uh, yeah, it's better in every way, better in every way. And uh, there is a Kickstarter coming uh, with a new red grass wet palette, uh, new sponges that I'm starting to test right now because uh, they asked me if I wanted to try, since I use them uh, in every single video, I had the honor to, to have them uh, first. <laughs> and I let you know how, how it behaves. It's mostly, I think there is also new paper, but uh, I want to make a video about that. And, uh, a pleasure. I. I I really need this kind of uh, real time. Uh, I, I'll try to, to put up a, a Twitch uh, sooner or later because uh, during the day I'm always here. So it could be nice to have someone to talk with <laughs> just for that. Enamels, uh, uh, we talked about enamels uh, uh, earlier, but uh, I have them, but I prefer uh, oils over enamels. I, I don't need that kind of uh, drying speed, uh, and I prefer to have uh, the time uh, to to play with uh, with uh, that kind of paint. Since I use them for weathering, uh, I prefer to have the time to move the paint around. Uh, how can I get that? Take me feet work instead. <laughs> paint is me. <laughs> uh, 
when I'm using my airbrush, the white paint for scale 75 is making the small dot pattern effect on black primer. Am I watering too much? No, it's something that uh, that's a, a nice question. That's why I use uh, white ink because uh, white paint uh, is always very chalky because uh, of the nature and the physical behavior of uh, its pigments. So you'll always get. Uh, that bit of uh, dots and spatters. And uh, it's even more powerful, that kind of behavior, when you use that uh, on top of black, because uh, the, the difference in values makes everything uh, pop more. So a little dot of white on top of a skin tone is almost invisible, but when you put it on top of black, it's super visible. So it's not a problem of dilution, but is uh, every, every pot of black uh, except inks uh, and even inks, uh, when you start uh, doing that kind of trick, uh, can give you the dots. Uh, but uh, you can manage to, to avoid that kind of behavior because of the fluidity and the concentration of pigment and the fact that uh, being so fluid, uh, you don't have uh, too much of that uh, chalkiness uh, fighting against uh, the airbrush. E e e e Thank you so much. Thank you, Dragon. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm, you know, I, I'm overwhelmed when you do this kind of stuff. Ah, Twitch, uh, Twitch, uh, Twitch. Uh. I don't know. I don't want. To, I like the format of uh, of the channel on YouTube. I like to deliver short lessons. Uh, but you you saw that I love also to to talk endlessly, so Twitch can be an idea. Since now I didn't have uh, a real time frame during the day to introduce uh, something like Twitch, because you saw that uh, my efficiency drops down <laughs> into crazy levels when I'm uh, I'm talking, but. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, often about Twitch uh, for this because, uh, again, it's a, it's a lonely work. It's a solitary work. And uh, especially in these, uh, these uh, COVID times, uh, I, I used to, to have a lot of people coming, uh, coming in during the day. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's different now. So Twitch can be, can be an add-on. Yeah, Liquitex uh, for 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 me is better than any other white ink. If you want to avoid the dot and if you want uh, if you want uh, the smoothness, it's just more more uh, not sat saturated in terms of pigments, so it creates a smoother kind of layer. And the suggestions for airbrush clogging is. Uh, Thin your paint better. <laughs> you have to to work a bit on uh, thinning your paint. Uh, the high pressure helps uh, in this, uh, but uh, if you use paint that is a bit too thick uh, with a high pressure, you get even more clogging because uh, it's uh, it's already more difficult to push uh, outside the airbrush. Then you have uh, the, um, the, 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 the hair drying the paint, uh, so dilution is the way to, to overcome the clogging. And I want to do something with, with, uh, with Vince. I don't know if uh, I have to talk with him. Because, uh, yeah, I thought that uh, the one from before <laughs> wasn't re the real Vince. <laughs> I thought it was a joke, but yeah, it, it was uh, the real Vince. Uh, and uh, I want to do something with him. Uh, and uh, I'm more for, for uh, practical things. So, but I'm open to, to everything. Yeah, Schminke, Schminke are, uh, are good. The aero color but uh, they are super difficult to find uh, in Italy and even in Ireland. So I stick with the stuff uh, 
I can find it, I can uh, stock uh, easily with the quick run to the store. So. <laughs> I think I know who is uh, Gorfind. Uh, <laughs> okay, in my that that's in my Italian game club, uh, they used to let me talk, uh, and they gave me miniatures, uh, and I painted miniatures <laughs> automatically. So the trick is uh, to let me talk and. Uh, put a miniature in my hands. <laughs> nice. Yep, we, we'll have to talk uh, about Twitch. Uh, and uh, I already noticed that uh, you know better the, the Twitch uh, situation uh, than uh, I do. <laughs> You know, I, I like to, to, to do my script. I like to do, you see that I tend to, to enlarge without a, a proper script. And uh, I really like uh, what I'm doing on, uh, on YouTube uh, because you saw in my videos that uh, there is kind of a connection between, uh, between videos because um, every model, uh, is a consequence of the model I painted before. So if I understand something, uh, I'm applying that stuff in the next model. So it's it's a flowing uh, procedure. And uh, I like the format on YouTube because it's easy to to pack the content in a in a digestible bite. Your Space Marine chapter. Uh, do you have any tips on coming up with an interesting score scheme? Uh, ooh, there are so many ways. That, that's a huge topic. If you want to create a color scheme, especially for Space Marines, uh, start with a single color. Don't, don't go over the palette, uh, over the, the, the wheel too much. Uh, it, there's a reason why, why the most popular, popular chapters are... Uh, Blood Angels, one color and just a bit of black, a uh, bit of gold, uh, two colors. But uh, especially in the newest artworks, it's just one color and black. Ultramarines. Ultramarines are, are a bit on the edge because uh, they are primary tones. You have the, the classic red, yellow, and blue. But the yellow turned into a neutral kind of gold. Uh, red sometimes in the only in the guns uh, or uh, even the guns are black stick to one powerful tone salamanders green dark angels green and uh, neutral color for the robes if you want something really powerful for space marines stick to one main color that's that's my process for space marines Uh, in Italia è impossibile da reperire Magic Mix direttamente dalla casa pagando 30 euro uh, I bought this uh, in Italy this is not super essential don't focus too much on, on this uh, this kind of stuff again I, I told you that's this is still my my main choice so the name is Magic Mix but uh, it doesn't make magic <laughs> doesn't make any kind of magic for your painting so any kind of uh, matte medium uh, don't focus too much about uh, the tools Th there are some tools that i like that i prefer but uh, again the name is really catchy but just medium with a bit of retarder so let's see one of the last questions uh, what matte medium good for oil paints uh, or is matte varnish uh, after better uh, I'm trying like I have the liquid the classic uh, Winsor & Newton liquid for uh, for drying quickly but then uh, it improve, uh, improve, uh, improves the glossiness 
And uh, for uh, a matte finish, uh, because I was thinking about mediums in general, you can use stuff like this. Uh, whoop. Thinner, that uh, speed up the drying time, so the paint uh, wrinkles a bit, uh, and uh, creates a more matte, uh, matte finish. And I don't like to varnish on top of the finished paint job, especially on, uh, on top of uh, oils, because you kill what makes oils, uh, oils. So that's a trick, uh, the, the thinner, or uh, uh, making the drying time of the, of the oil quicker. So you use the drying box. Uh, every, every paint uh, that uh, dries quickly, Every paint could be acrylic, could be oil, could be enamel, tends to be more matte. So the only real trick to to move this kind of uh, finish is uh, the drying time and the again the drying the matte effect thinner does that makes everything a bit quicker, so you get a more matte finish. Oh yeah, I want to arrive to Salamanders. I have still the, the open playlist about uh, Space Marines, but uh, now I fixed on uh, custom Space Marines and uh, 3D printed Space Marines, uh, and I have to find the right model. But uh, yeah, I want to to do all the chapters uh, sooner or later. That could be a strange scheme or a grim dark version, but uh, I'll arrive also to the Salamanders. Synthetic brush. Uh, uh, I, I always go with the cheapest uh, synthetic brush I can find in the uh, art store. Because if you want a really good uh, or mm, relatively good uh, synthetic brush, uh, you'll paint uh, as a very good uh, natural, uh, natural brush. So I prefer to... I know it's not really environmental friendly, but... Uh, I prefer to buy more brushes and throw them away, especially because uh, I am in a in a virtuous cycle uh, with uh, paints for oils, uh, where now my collection is almost all uh, old uh, uh, natural sable brushes uh, that goes into that pile. So when they are not good enough for acrylics, uh, I put them into the the oil pile. So I can work with uh, natural bristles, uh, but on oils, uh, just using the same brush, but uh, moving it into a, another uh, another section. Okay, guys, I think uh, I think I think we are at the end. I completely lose track of the time when I do this kind of stuff. <gasps> it's like four hours. Okay. It's been uh, a pleasure. It's been uh, everything I hoped for because uh, I really needed to talk with other, in, in almost real time, uh, with other painters, with other modelers. I really needed this. And uh, so thanks to you for, uh, for having me here with me. Uh, thank you so much <laughs> for everything for really everything you are so so kind and so generous and uh, sorry I, f I found the violet <laughs> it was uh, in the back of the table and uh, see you next week with uh, let's see if I have uh, a little preview for you they're not finished yet but uh, you deserve a little preview. Oop, these guys. Whoa. Speed paint, classic, uh, the classic style I used for uh, for uh, Warcry. They they lack all the highlights and definition, but uh, yeah, it's it will be focused on the quickest way to get uh, the GW style uh, simple steps. Uh, well, a lot of steps, but super quick.
guys. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, a long night. <laughs> I promised the uh, uh, greetings for, for the Italians uh, still there. Ragazzi, grazie. And, and. E cercherò di fare più cose in italiano perché ve le meritate, perché siete, siete grandi. E son, mi sono sentito molto espat nel, negli ultimi anni, ma e, um, ho fatto tanta roba in inglese e voglio, voglio fare qualcosa anche per voi. Ho bisogno solo del tempo, però mi organizzo. Guys, thank you so much. And I'm not sure how to end. Oh, there is a big button, end the stream, end the stream. <laughs> See you next week. Bye.